Hello, ghouls, guys, gals, and any other life forms that may be streaming this broadcast. You are now listening to Storming the Unknown with Ashley Storm, where we have hauntings, UFOs and extraterrestrials, cryptids, serial killers, and dark history, all under one freaky little roof. A gathering place for the morbid curiosity to come and play and learn about the deepest, darkest parts of everything weird. Feast on this smorgasbord of everything supernatural, and brace yourselves as we go Storming the Unknown. What about now? Is that better? I think that should be better. I sound like a chipmunk. That's not better. Yes, that's better. Good. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, sometimes you have to switch it. It's the same output, but you have to switch it. It's it's just ridiculous. So anyway, like I said, we'll have other people coming on. Hello. Thank you, Penny. Hi, Peggy. Peggy is one of the few people who have donated thus far. Darren, don't laugh at me. Darren, come on and help me with this. Do you want to? I'm going to send you the link. You're going to come on and help me. I feel like you have nothing the better to do if you're watching my show. <laughs> um, we will be drawing at 9 o'clock. To see who the winners are. Channing is one of the people who is in the third tier. Have the list and the name wheel thing all up. So while we wait for everyone else to come on, I'm going to go through the history of the asylum, what all this entails, what all we're trying to get done. There. I just sent you the link, Darren. Yes, Darren. Peggy, I know you don't like doing stuff like this, but if you want to join, you're welcome to, too. I'm going to send Peggy the link. It's a free-for-all, y'all. I want anybody to come on, because investigators themselves, the input that you guys have for these locations matters, you know, because I focused on apparently the wrong things. I got it clean when people didn't want it clean. They just wanted a bathroom and cleaning it out took a lot of money. You had, we had to get the dumpsters, those big like industrial type dumpsters, get everything dumped out that way. And then the crew and the workers were a lot of money, but they also stole most of the money. They got maybe like 25% of it done and then left. And I had already paid them because I felt like if I pay you, you'll make sure you get a like a thorough job. And that was just not how it went. So the history of it, yeah, we'll go through that. That's fine, Darren. I sent you the link. Okay. So it was built in 1954 as a nursing home, and many people think that because it's called the asylum, it's an asylum or it was an asylum. That is not the case at all. It was called the asylum because the people who bought it from the haunted house, 
they named it the asylum to make it like more spooky and scary. And I just never changed the name for it. And I tell everyone before they go, but people, when they film there, they still say it was an asylum. All these other things happened. That was only the instance for like about five to six months of it actually running. And that wasn't actual mental patients. Those were people who were just dropped off. And these are people who should have been in county poorhouses. County poorhouses at the time were where people with special needs or kids who just couldn't be taken care of by their family members, even like mid-teen type ages, were dropped off. Or uh, the poorhouses were also where ex-inmates could go. It was basically little hovel towns where people who were unwanted could stay. And they just kept getting dropped off in the front door of the nursing home and they kept them there for a little bit until they could find other places for them but it's not an actual asylum Darn, good i hate my face being so big hi hi you're a buddy what's up chicken boy not much i'm so it's, glad i missed you dude. it's uh sounded pretty good like a... we haven't oh. we haven't done the show in forever oh yeah you sounded pretty good as a chipmunk <laughs> I, you know I can do it too, but let's not get started on that. Maybe we should just fill the next like 10 minutes with impressions. For every impression <laughs> I do, you got to donate a dollar. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, nothing. Congratulations to your daughter. I saw she just uh, graduated and whatnot. Oh, well, yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Peggy, she's... what did you send? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's uh, she's ready for college. Are you ready for her to go to college? Sure. Oh, you don't have like, well, well, was it the fly the nest syndrome out flying the coops? Oh, I'm sure by the time I let her go, I'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, summer. Is she waiting the whole summer? Uh, she, yeah, she's, uh, she's going to head down to the Milwaukee area. How far is that from you? I don't know. That oh, area. Milwaukee is about our... 10 hour 20 minutes away so she's going to marquette university marquette yeah there's one in michigan but this is the other one the bigger the the bigger name school that's like big for basketball mm -hmm. mostly for the ncaa uh that's where she's going so mm -hmm. it's like where the brewers are to play baseball and bucks for basketball that's uh i always forget that you're so you and Shay with those accents, you guys kill me. You're so well, you yeah, know. Yeah, no. Uh, Shay. She doesn't even Shay. She, she doesn't even say Shay. It's so weird when I hear herself like say her own name. Oh, like, that's sure, not yeah. how everyone else says it. Oh, she was a Shay. I can't even say it. <laughs> I can't Penny. even say it the way she says it. And I'm good at impressions, but I can never get. She the was supposed to have a show, but I don't know if she uh, having <laughs> she, problems or she just she said she that. was still on hiatus because she oh. bitched me out earlier on my page oh, because she... I didn't I didn't ask her because you know she hasn't been doing our show, yeah. So I figured she was still out, which I completely understand. I mean, her how, that was gnarly what she went through. Oh yeah, and <laughs> she was like. Thanks for, or gee, she called me a geezer, first of all. She said, <laughs> geezer, where's my invite? And I was like, first of all, you know you're always invited, but I thought right. you were still, like, taking a break. She's like, I am slash was. I'm like, what do you mean am slash was? You either is, you ain't. <laughs> oh, you easy, In fact, you easy. I just sent you a message earlier. You probably didn't get it. What was it? Yeah, I've been trying to set up the show. I had to upload a I, bunch of stuff that I normally do. You on don't Fridays now, or do no? I just did it on a Friday because this is just like the fundraiser thing. Oh, so raising money for the asylum that way I can oh, okay. get my bathrooms and the rest of my roof fixed. I already got the middle half of the middle wing, like the main wing, and all of the south wing redone. I just need to get the rest of the middle wing and the north wing, and oh, then okay. I can start working on the windows because until the huge holes in the roof are patched up there's no point i have spent no. so much money on locks and those locks are not cheap the right. doors to like reinforce them and everything those are that's an old building those frames are very particular about what they need right and 
it's just, it's a lot more than I, I anticipated. I, I really just didn't think it through on that. That's on me, mm-hmm. but I also donated more than I sold <laughs> this year. <laughs> so what I anticipated well, to have done by now. So what? Let's see. Thing. Um, I think here. I want to ask you a question. How many locations have you been to that don't have a working restroom or like electricity and like don't have like the amenities that you well, that we all I want in a place? But I mean, like, I feel like that's something that we all encounter all of the well, time. I've been to Farrar School and you've heard of Farrar. I've uh, heard of it, but I don't know about the conditions there. See, the conditions there are pretty, are pretty bad for the bathrooms. I mean, it's... They're lucky you don't is, see our... is there a bathroom? It it does have a bathroom, but it's just really not really a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. It, it it's like it's like a cut out of a horror movie if you want to <laughs> go into a bathroom. Uh, I at least tell you I have a camping toilet. Like I have a little bucket with the seat. I at least get you like the toilet seat for the five gallon bucket, some trash bags. Okay, <laughs> so <go> camping style. <laughs> uh, so have you heard of uh well you've heard of uh Broadhead Manor, right? Yes, but again, not of the conditions. Same way as yours. You got to use a five-gallon bucket to flush. Y- you flush it where? Where do they flush it? You can flush it down the toilet. But you have to put, after you go to the bathroom, you have to pour the five-gallon bucket into the toilet in order to flush it. Okay, but I actually make people shit in a bucket. <laughs> no, I haven't been to That's a location. That's what I'm talking about. No, I have, I have not been to a location like that. <laughs> Like, you can either go, I mean, you can go outside in the woods if you want. I mean, if that's more your thing, but <laughs> I wow. have a camp. Be you have to go like camping book, right? style. Yeah, exactly. But you have to go camping style. <laughs> and I mean, and it's, you know, I, I'm trying to think of the abbreviation for it. T-Y-O-P. T-Y-O-O-P. Take out your own poop. <laughs> well, see, I used, we, <laughs> when I was little. We always went to this uh, cabin on the lake, and it had an outhouse. Yeah, I, I kind of want one, but at the same time, there are too many crackheads. That's why I had to get rid of my porta potty. I used to have a porta potty out there. But... Oh, is it tip it while they're in there? Well, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like I never. Well, I bet you they won't do crack in there ever again. <laughs> Yeah, but they fall asleep in there, but they also, like, leave it a mess. And yeah. I'm pretty sure it's also, like, teenagers, too, though, because I'm right by the high school. Oh, yeah, that could be, yeah. The and it's also a small walk, town, yeah. but, yeah, I feel like I definitely mm-hmm. know at some point it's been crackheads because you find things in there, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, things I don't want to know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, what are you doing... Friday or Saturday next week? I'll be... Oh, so this is fun. I was supposed to be out of the asylum because I'm doing a... Well, somebody's book there, but I'm going to have someone else like open the building and do the thing for them because I just got invited to live stream Celtic Fest, which is oh. actually on Texas Scaregrounds. So every, every year where Texas Scaregrounds is, which is one of like the biggest haunted house type dealios it's on this piece of land that's just fucking nuts we went there during geek end when we met up with the lone wolf paranormal gang and everyone over there and just walking through it i was like oh this place would be awesome to investigate Uh, wicked corpse playground that's what it's called Mm. wicked corpse playground and tyler and i mean it's just freaking enormous and uh there's some weird like elemental stuff going on. Like just, it's a real magical place. Hmm. And that's where we're going to have Celtic Fest too. So during the seasons, like they do a Santa's workshop all throughout the area. Oh, really? And then, yeah. And then they do um, Celtic so they Fest have haunted Santa? this weekend. No, it's just, <laughs> they just turned it into a winter wonderland. <laughs> well, but it is spooks. haunted. But it's, I mean, it's amazing. And, um, yeah, I'll be there. And then I'm also, they want me to run a booth doing tarot readings because I've been doing that a lot more like publicly lately because oh, okay. I only do like certain sets of cards, you know, I don't do like. Let's throw in the ruins and see how you do. Right. 
<laughs> I'm actually trying to work on that. So I didn't mention that. I'm working on that. So, um, yeah, but it'll be fun. But why do you ask? Because you... Well, I was thinking like, okay, so you want to raise money and stuff like that, like what we're doing, what you're doing today. Uh, I was thinking, how about like a, a day and night investigation being like broadcast, like I'll run the broadcast. If you, if there's like a, a link you want me to use, uh-huh. like if people want to donate, they can donate while people are investigating your asylum. Well, why didn't you tell me that tonight? I could have done it tonight. Because I just thought of it. I Dios mio, Darren. <laughs> I just actually got up from a nap. <laughs> sure. Wow. Yeah, wow. I uh, yeah, I had my show at two o'clock this afternoon, and I got tired. What was your question today? I didn't get to watch it yet. Uh, we were talking about the the shine method, where like um, the shining and Doctor Sleep, and kind of like you know where. You can send messages to one another. They can see, hear, uh, hear your messages in their head, like yeah. the, Danny was doing with the that guy in the kitchen part. Like, hey, you know, what would you like ice cream, Doc? And then the wife, yeah. the mother said, "How did you know his nickname was Doc?" And you know, for us, you know, they're saying it in their heads and knowing yeah. what was going on. So telepathy, telekinesis, that type of stuff. So what do you think about it? Because I'm interested because I always, my husband, he'll be like, stop. And I'm like, no, because I, I swear I can do it to people. I can be like, look at me, look at me. Or like, hey, what are you doing? Like, think it hard enough at them. And they look and they're like, what the fuck? Like, I know I didn't hear you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not talking out loud, but I know that they know that. Oh, yeah. Or or it's or it's kind of like you get that feeling like okay you're sitting watching TV or whatever on your phone and all of a sudden it pops in your head like a certain person pops in your head mm-hmm. that you feel like maybe something's not right or yes. I've done that to a few people and it's like I text them or I call them and say hey you okay because I get the feeling that something's wrong and then. And that next thing you know, it's like, yeah, something is going wrong, or it's, I'm not okay. And how is it you not? How did you know that? <laughs> well, you just get that weird feeling, you know? Yes, like um, it feels kind of like a heat source. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about, Cynthia? Do you want to come on? Hey, she Cynthia. said she was just gonna watch, but you know Cynthia wants to. Come on, on. All, all your favorite friends are on here right come now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Cynthia, come on. I feel like we're on a um, old school radio show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you there. So yeah, that's what we were talking about today. Cynthia even joined me for a little bit uh, uh, with the questions and stuff when she. Uh, came in chat today, so she must have been bored at work. <laughs> <laughs> but and Monday night, I'm having Traveler's Moon on. That's Kelly McCarvel, right? Yep. And um, Chris Nielsen. Yes. Yep. I'm having them on Monday night. Wonderful. My so, cop is in the building. Sup, what's up, Chicken Blade? Hey, how's it going? Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Cynthia's in the motherfucking house, y'all. It's officially a party. Woody woo. Oh yeah. We got the whole crew in this bitch. Hey. Well, hello oh, there. Sin, always a party up? when Chicken Ashley's around. Foot. <laughs> Hi, baby girl. I love you. I love you too. Oh my god. I'm so happy to see your faces. <laughs> Oh, this makes my heart so happy. I love you guys so much. <laughs> Yay. Oh. Okay, so this is basically going to be our bus stop show, but on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, you're supposed to bring a talent? So, you're supposed to what? Bring right. a talent? Bring the living a talent? <laughs> <laughs> nah, we're fine. Uh, <laughs> So, Sin. What? I'm going to ask you the same question. What's that? Um, 
and Michael, I'll ask you the same thing as well, because I'm, I'm genuinely curious to know, like, how many other locations actually deal with this issue? So how many locations, like, you could just give me, like, percentage if you want. Would you say don't have, like, working restrooms or, like, facilities or, like, poor infrastructure, like, um, holes in the roof, things like that? Um, you know. I think everything that we have investigated maybe about ooh, 10%. Okay. Haven't had? I mean, yeah, have, don't have. Don't have, okay. Don't have. Everything, everywhere that I've gone most, I should say most everywhere, not everywhere, but most everywhere that I've been has some sort of something. Okay. Do, do no. that ever make you poop in a bucket? <laughs> no. No, I have never. I mean, you don't necessarily have to poop in it. You can pee in it, too. I mean. So, you know. I've never I, had to use a bucket or anything like that. Okay. So, like, th that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want, I don't want people to have to be pooping in a bucket. Like. Right. Help, help me help y'all. Like, you, I, I genuinely don't get it. Like, I tell people about the conditions before they come. Right, oh, tell them diarrhea. There is a right. Oh. Like, I'm like, there's okay. So there's a there's little places you should not eat in town before you investigate. I I do. I I recommend places not to eat, like the McDonald's that's right down the street. It's convenient, yeah, but oh, should, I call them the McGurgles. You should put that out. Getting them. <laughs> you be getting them hardcore. What? Rich Fennell. One night the Fennells went and ate, and now we have an inside joke with that, that it's called the McGurgles, because oh. we were in the middle of an investigation. You just, I don't know, you know, if it made him poopy or whatnot, but his, his stomach was definitely like, <laughs> oh, I like, we were doing that. EVP sessions and all we caught was Rich's stomach. It was amazing. <laughs> it was so funny. It was just hilarious. ask Cynthia how my stomach gets that investigation. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't give Darren certain foods, otherwise, holy <laughs> lord, it's about as bad as Taylor. <laughs> Who else Taylor. snorted? Somebody Taylor else snorted. That was, that was me. me. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a few sessions like Darren's coming. <laughs> uh, Taylor, Taylor, if you give him like, he'll take a bag of Doritos and get a, a can of the. Frito Lay bean dip. No. Oh. Bean dip First of all, oh. that's amazing. That's an amazing combination. It's mm. delicious. It might be good, but it's not good when you have to deal with it <laughs> later on. True. It's yeah. like marking indigestion. Marking indigestion. You don't want to sleep marking. in that room. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fun to have an experiment of that with you in the, uh, what's it called, that attic space that you slept in. I can't remember where it was. Oh, Melbourne? He didn't yeah. sleep in the attic in Melbourne. Thought, it was too where hot. Where was it that you... It was Melbourne. Uh, no. Yeah, you, you were supposed to, was, right? I was supposed yep. to, but it was too okay. hot. Yeah. So I know you were supposed to be locked up somewhere by yourself. I did. I was locked up in a room full of 40 dolls for mm. about an hour and a half. That's all hour. you play. Actually, hour. Huh? That's, a, that's all you play. Yeah. When you end up getting... Yeah. No, thank you. Woke up dead. Wake up dead <laughs> from a doll. Yeah, I was having conversations Not with dolls right to, to buy to bypass the time. <laughs> yep. For why? It was funny. Yeah. But I want to go back to Melbourne because, yeah, I still got to get in the attic. Nope. I, spent a, I actually spent an hour and a half by myself uh, when we got there. And um, everybody's like, I could hear him down because you can hear everybody outside talking. Um, and it's like, where did it go? Where did it go? Well, I think we'd investigate. I was just darn right, I did. I was up in the, up in the attic. Oh, so, yeah. How long did you stay in there before you were like, not afraid? I was afraid. Oh, I went right up there with my. Not uh, afraid. I said, how long were you up there before you were like, it's too hot? <laughs> oh, well, I, it was five o'clock in the afternoon I went up there. So five minutes? No, I was, I was up there for an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> He was up there for about an hour and a half ish. Yeah, longer than me. I would have been like five minutes and be like, "Nope, I'm done." <laughs> and then I, and then I went back downstairs, and then I went and got uh, my plasma ball, 
and I brought it back up to the attic, and I let it sit in there in the room for uh, 35, 38 minutes or so. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yep, just to see what would happen. And I actually got a lot of stuff on video about that. But it was like towards like 25 minutes in. Yeah. Then there's a lot of stuff happened. But everybody was saying they were seeing shadows. Did anything happen with the dolls? No, nothing moved. Nothing got punted. We, we were trying. We were trying to get them to move the dolls, but they wouldn't do it. <laughs> because my thing is, everyone's like, why don't you play with this? Most most ghosts are probably just as sketched out by dolls as most humans are. You know what I'm saying? Like, we carry those fears and phobias. I'm like, I'm not touching that doll. I know. Probably some dolls want to probably, if they could beat the crap out of you, probably beat the crap out of you. Oh, I would be the one to I be. I think everyone has the potential to do it. That's why you don't fuck with dolls, Darren. You just punt them. Hey. Oh. <laughs> what would they never do to you? When you're surrounded by multiple oh, of them, okay? They, you they look at me wrong. That's soldier. what they've done. Just, just, Darren. <laughs> Darren. Don't Darren. you see what's in the back here? I got a doll in the back with along with the penguin. No, I can't see. And that. a Ghostbuster sign. I see the Ghostbusters thing. Oh yeah, he's got a Raggedy Andy back there. Yeah, I can't see that. My eyes. Oh, you don't have Raggedy. The other one. Yours, but... by the way. No, he doesn't have Annabelle. Hell no, I don't want that thing in my house. We were trying to get him Annabelle, but can't find uh, one yet. I'd punt it as far as I could punt it. No, you would not. <laughs> Absolutely. Drop her on you her head. Love it. I'll give that I'll give I, that thing a DDT on its head. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Stun him. Stun him. Whatever. Somebody slam that sucker. Uh-uh. <laughs> okay, Michael. So this is different. We have a we actually have like a variation now. Because before Mike jumped on, you know, you guys investigate together. You guys go to places up north, places that I've never been to. Mike and I live in the same area, and he's been to the asylum. He understands why we need this. <laughs> he gets what I'm doing with the location. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's seen in person, like, what we're Goes trying to accomplish. There. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Show. Um, but I think that you guys, the North, not necessarily the locations are nicer, but more expensive. Exa- exactly. <laughs> they're more known. They're um, not like new. They're not new known. by any means. Well, I was more known. Wisconsin's not that far known. But the Boygans don't want to get to notice. Me. Boygan? The Boygans Boygan. want to get noticed the most. Sorry, I, I'm originally from the north. That's why I'm like Sheboygan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yep. can pronounce it right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, bud. Oh, I was <laughs> born and raised near Chicago. Uh-huh. Chicago. Chicago. Shy town. <laughs> and how oh, shy were you? <laughs> <laughs> I was very shy until I moved down here. <laughs> You guys are ridiculous. Um, but how many <laughs> locations have you been to? Hello, Mr. Kittle. Oh, that's not a kitty. That's a puppy. I need glasses like a motherfucker, yo. Holy that, that, shit. that would be a puppy. I, that's what I corrected myself <laughs> once my eyes focused in a little bit. I, tr- I truly, truly need glasses. Like, I really need glasses. Just smoke a bowl before you come on. A what? Just smoke a bowl before you come on. How does it help with that? Lock on what he's saying. Oh, I thought that was like a myth. <laughs> no, I heard it's supposed to be perfect for your eyes. Mm, yeah. I'm I'm concerned to start doing it. Yeah, we just got to get it you Are you like almost legally blind? Like, how much weed do you need to smoke to be able to see, my my guy? Like, uh, oh, I don't know. Not have to buy make pounds. Pounds. My right eye come back, baby. I, I, Probably half a pound. At least. <laughs> Dan's going to be like, the question of the day is. Just give me a duffel bag. Oh, God. No. How, how, how am I? <laughs> what would be funny is watching him walk into a building and be like, is this the right building that the <laughs> ghosts are in? Fuck yes. It won't I'm take much. Taste, it won't take much. Walk into the wrong building. He's like, I'm just here to investigate. Investigate what, I, my guy? I will we don't feel know my you. way. I will feel my way. <laughs> 
Just make sure you're feeling the right areas. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Ew, this is kind of wet. Actually, I am so sorry. <laughs> Are you? For what? <laughs> For y'all. For Darren. <laughs> Um, but how many sweet see, I'm just trying to ask this motherfucker how many bathrooms, like how many locations do them? How many bathrooms do I have? Three, no, not okay. that. And y'all talking about how wet wet shit is like what is going on? Uh, uh, is that actual pool? Storming the unknown, guys. So, so Yorktown Memorial Hospital doesn't have facilities. Okay. Broken Bow doesn't have facilities. What's that one? That's um, <laughs> the Nazareth, when I'd go there, they had a uh, porta pot. And Fort Walters has a porta pot. So, and they do have a working bathroom now. They've got it fixed up. <laughs> so, you're not alone. Yorktown's there with you. Does that one come with a bidet? I got a hose outside to see your ass. <laughs> yeah. oh, well. I could get a spray bottle from Dollar Tree. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bruh, you, you a could... bidet is the same fucking concept except I'm smart. Or you can you just, go. you know, bottle, take some water, bottle it and say, oh day, broken bow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> when, whenever, one time we walked in we hadn't been there for like we hadn't been there for like maybe two weeks because mm -hmm. it was the holidays oh it was when it snowed and everything and we couldn't get out there we were like stuck inside for like three weeks straight and yeah. we finally went back and Angela was with me and we opened it up and I went that smells haunted. Like, I don't know if y'all understand. I think people understand so. that. When you walk into certain locate, like that, yeah. that old smell, like just like that's not quite musky, awesome. but Denise is motherfucking here too. It's like Denise beyond came. musky. She came. Oh my oh. gosh. Like game. I wasn't expecting you to come. Now I don't know what to that's do. That's why I came. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so excited. I fucking love this. I don't even care if we raise money. This is just going to be a great time. Right? <laughs> I mean, I do care if we raise money. Raise money. Donate, donate, yeah. donate. No, fuck <laughs> that shit. I was just kidding. But this is also a good <laughs> night. Phenomenal night. Um, so now that you're here, we can ask you this question. Now here's the question. Yeah. Here it the is. question that will end all questions. <laughs> How okay. many buckets have you shit in? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird way to phrase the question I'm about to ask you. And okay. hopefully that a hand doesn't come back up. <laughs> it's in a bucket. You'll be fine. Mostly. Maybe. I like Maybe. how she's got her hand on her chin and she's like, I am really regretting mm. coming on this show right now. Haunt, haunt yeah. the toilet. Face people make when they speak to me. So, I mean, I'm used to it. It's like, oh, I'm ready for this. Probably not. Um, so, how many locations? Because you haven't really, I guess, when I think about it, been to many other right. locations aside from the ones that you guys do regularly. And you guys right. have working restrooms at all of the ones that you guys participate at, correct? Yes. You don't make people shit in buckets? No. 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 Okay. No. Yeah. She's got the high so, class group. That's the right. The you don't live in the south. The toilets. <laughs> We just go camping style. Yeah, flush with gold. <laughs> Aside from the ones that you, you know, volunteer out and whatnot, how many have you gone to that don't have facilities or have like poor infrastructure? The roofs have little holes or things like that, like outside variants that disturb, not necessarily disturb, but just aren't just aesthetically make for a shitty night. Like, pleasing. Yeah. Well, not yeah. No, it doesn't make for a shitty I don't think. Oh, it could be a runny night. I don't think that, too. Oh, you meant a shitty. I get it. 
<laughs> you, you meant shit as a poop, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. I get it. I, I was talking about the holes in the roof, and I was like, I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's that shitty, but I, it took me a minute, but I got it. I've yeah. been up since this morning. You got to forgive me. Holly? Nice. Oh, but anyway, yeah, so how many locations aside from that? Uh, I don't think any, honestly. Um <laughs> He was right on key. These yeah. northern people just selling me out. Like we have fancy establishments. <laughs> well, I mean, you gotta you realize also, too. Just, I'm no. just fucking with y'all. In the exactly. north, it gets really cold, and nobody right. wants to go out and just hang out in the woods. <laughs> right. We have snow. Nope. Actually, we can't get away with skylights. I nope. know you have snow, and you don't even have holes in your roof, and your walls freeze. I should you not. I should have that picture so just stored away to put on the show. Nah, like, shit that's why I so <laughs> it's literally lined in ice. The the walls, the interior. Yeah. The interior like, walls. Inside yeah. Inside of an igloo. Yeah, but I think uh, that would also be phenomenal. Broken so something the layers. North doesn't have though. What? What's that? She's well, got a room fiber? where Computer equipment goes to die. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All types of electronics. When I cleared yeah. it out, because I had to do it by myself, I couldn't get a lot of the bigger items out because it wouldn't fit. And I was like, I'm not paying for another day for this fucking dumpster. So I just kind of like, so one room has nothing but a bunch of like broken fans. It's huh? got, no, there's the one that's got a pile of monitors, printers, towers, yeah. all piled up. It's like, Floppy man, disc. you can see the age of the monitors that's by cool. how wide they are and then how oh, thinner wow. they get. <laughs> I, cool. let, I cleanse it, but I also let people take, like, pieces, because sometimes people take them to build devices and things like that. Mm, that's cool. Like the electrical components from things. So I just let people take little, but I always make sure I cleanse everything that anyone takes. Mm, I was about to like, say. Can I, can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? I'm sure you can have it, but it, do you have to cleanse it? Yes. I'm not letting you leave one of my ghosty stuffs. And then I've had people like steal shit. <laughs> and then I'm like, so yeah. when your group was here, this was here. And I know where, like, even if it's just one of those random creepy eyeballs, it'd just be. In the middle of like a room, you know what I'm talking That's about. Not, I don't know how many oh, there are. Right. There's little plastic eyeballs everywhere from the haunted house, and I left Ooh. them because the ghosts like to play with them. Well, you'll be sitting in the middle or of a room, them. and you just hear, yeah, you hear like the bounce. It's a very uh, specific noise. It's a very it's a hollow, ball. yeah. And you hear it just like rolling down, and be sitting in a room, and then just see it like rolling past you, or like it's thrown into a room with you. Or you can put it facing down and ask them to turn it, and it just goes. Yeah, I think you lost nope. the Yankees that's, on the ping pong balls. That's too much. It's awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> what? It's amazing. It's mind blowing how interactive they are. Like they're just. Oh yeah. They're they're not aggressive, but they are like very in your face with like, look what I. I always say they're like a uh, Stewart. Look what I can do. <laughs> Look what I can do. Yeah. I always say that yes. I like <clears throat> They like to get you. close on that, though. Yeah, get no. what? They like to get close on that effect, though, because yeah. there was that bone right on my back that I felt it go by. I was like, you got that my attention. Crazy. And how many people were in that room with us that night? I think four or like five. Least, yeah, there were at least... You were on the six, floor. I think Rich and Edie were with us, weren't they? I think so. I think there was six then, because I remember someone off in the back corner. I'm pretty sure it was six. But that bone was huge. We were yeah. sitting in the middle of the room. You could tell this story. I got to keep typing. Go ahead. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> real quick, how long do you plan on being on yet? Until nine. Why do you got to go eat or something? Yeah. You got to go use the toilet? In a real restroom, <laughs> not a bucket? I, I, I'm going to go get some Taco Bell. Oh. oh, Taco Hell. I mean, oh. Taco. Yeah, I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> so you could sit in a bucket later? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. We'll I'll, be I'll sitting in a bucket because of Taco Bell with the plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I have a bucket for you if you need it. It's portable, bro. It's convenient as fuck. I'm just saying. I'll, I'll pop back on when I get back. Okay. Take it easy there, uh, bud. You know? About 25 minutes or so. How close is the Taco Bell to you that you're going to be back that quick? Well, it depends on the tacos. Like Next that. door. <laughs> <laughs> About five minutes away. <laughs> Apparently yeah, nobody gotta, goes there. <laughs> he's got to take all the roundabouts to get there. Yeah, about <laughs> four got, of them. <laughs> y'all got roundabouts. Fucking yeah, we north. Do. The north is weird, yo. I feel like if I ever came up it's north, be like Europe. I, I'd be like, this is like the Wild West, yo. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> there oh, no. is a roundabout in Texas. But there's, there's like not? four of them, and they're well, like in random ass places, yeah. and. That's why I'm afraid because if there's more people, to me, people don't know how to drive. And I'm like, maybe y'all do because you're used to it. But in the South, when you come to a roundabout, I'm not a, I'm not really like a Christian I, type person, but I see some, some I of old deep Catholic prayers when I come to a roundabout. <laughs> I almost made my sister in law throw up. <laughs> oh, God. She was sitting in the back seat and we were going through about four of them. I, I was going through one of them really slow. And she says, oh, my God. Oh, my God. But I says, okay. Go to the next one. Boom. Right around me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <sighs> Guaranteed she won't ride with me ever again. <laughs> That's why you come to Iowa. We don't have roundabouts. At least not that many. Just straightaways. I was about to say, uh-huh. is it just like one giant cornfield or some shit? Just like, <laughs> well, yeah. If you need gasoline, you just go to the cornfield. I, I wasn't being, I wasn't like trying to be rude. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen pictures. No, of it. you're it not being like facetious. It is. Yeah, no, Iowa really is corn great. country. Yes, it <laughs> is. Children of the corn. But I don't ever see like big infrastructure in Iowa. You know what I'm saying? Like road wise, like it looks like it really does just like just like one big rural rural area where it just goes like. Pretty much. The fucking goose is here. What is going? And Joe fucking Vitali. What the hell is what? happening right now? Hey, what? Joe. All right. Wow. I'll, I'll be back. I've never been pulled into someone just before so fast. Oh, crap. God. <laughs> My mind is blown. As soon as I see someone, I just go click, click. Boop, boop. I wasn't even ready. <laughs> Do you want me to hey, take actually. you off real quick while you get No, I'm good. No, I'm good. I was just like, holy crap. And here I am. You got a Shut bucket up. too, Joe? Uh, <laughs> I'm so uh, fucking happy. This is the greatest Friday I've ever had. Who else is that? No fucking way. Oh my goodness. This I just long guy. time no see, my friend. <laughs> hey, how you guys doing? Wow. <laughs> what is happening right now? My yeah, mind we really are storming the unknown tonight. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we got a whole little Dothraki army and shit. What's up? <laughs> We got this that, awesome, man. this awesome panel of people, and we're talking about shitting in a bucket. <laughs> Basically, well, that's why we're raising money. That way, you don't have to shit in a bucket. Like that's the right. whole point, you know. <laughs> I mean, we're raising money for the bathrooms and the roof, and a lot of people. And again, this is what gets me the most is that people complain about it. But they're the ones who booked like at half price, or you know what I'm saying? Like, right, did like deals or like booked with like, well, even if you booked the deal or full price, you're told in advance, so it's not like you show up and you're like, oh, what? But I also told them in advance, I tell you about the conditions, like, hey, you can either go outside, I don't mind, you know, I have a pretty big field next door that's ours so you can go piss near the or shit near the trees if you'd like you do it that way we're in the south a lot of people are fine with that but then i'm like i also have a bucket if that makes you uncomfortable and i was telling them like it's a five gallon bucket but i have that nice like little toilet seat it has a lid like it's like the one that you pop on it and you're like it's for camping oh uh, i thought the fundraiser was to get the sawdust for the bucket um, no, yeah. <laughs> like a fucking hamster cage <laughs> <laughs> you like that was so sawdust it. Your money's not gonna go towards sawdust, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you what do you need, Ashley? Have you had like um somebody come out and look and see what it would cost to get it in? Yes. So the bathroom, instead of redoing the whole thing, he said it would be cheaper just to come out and place a new septic tank. 
and run it to one of the, it's the bathroom that's like in the least worst shape. <laughs> so, and just run it into that one instead of having to repipe the whole building. Cause that's initially what it was. And that's only yeah. going to be about 3000 to do. Okay. And then the roof, yeah, I have most of the material, but it got stolen. I what? have material to do the roof and it got stolen. Cause you've, Michael's been there. He knows, like... They they leave the sheetrock and the lumber alone, but they take the roof material? Huh. Maybe you should they, start storing other stuff in that back. room. That's what I was thinking. They won't go back into that wing, and that's where the priest got shoved. So I'm thinking... That, that's exactly what I was thinking of storing... Yes. Starting to store <laughs> stuff in there. Because no matter... Like they stole the camping toilet last weekend. Michael had to drive all the way up to Broken Bow and bring this other stuff oh up to the group that was up there because they stole it. Like yeah. Oliver and I were like crazy sick. Everything in what the is wrong with people out there. Crackhead Joe, it's fucking crackheads. Crackhead Joe, help me raise well, money. The funny so part I was the crackheads out. I have to drive a generator up there so they can charge their stuff and find out. They could have walked across the street to a building and charged for free. So I didn't have to drive up there if they remembered to walk across the street. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Because I had to have all the electricity turned off because I rewired everything. It was, you can ask Michael, everything was just like hanging down out of the ceiling, yeah. just throwing <laughs> gang signs. It was not safe at all it was it was so not safe but i got everything rewired Even the dolls were swinging saying save me <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure the dolls like our animatronics still go off we don't have any electricity in the building but they still go off and they're not even plugged in really they still yeah. go off yes although i gotta <laughs> admit i think you finally killed the spider <laughs> Bro, I swear to God, Sterling did something to it. That way it would stop jumping out at him. One of the cops, it jumps out of him almost every single time he's there. Yeah. I was telling people, this spider will go off randomly, and they're like, really? And we're walking around it, nothing, nothing. And I'm like, I swear, I got footage. Let me show you the footage. And then they were like, really? And start looking more, and they're like, well... But the cord is severed. I cut it because that bitch kept jumping out of me, and I was like, "Fuck you!" They're not even <laughs> the cord, so I actually severed the cord yeah. myself. And it was still jumping. There's nothing running to it, and it still goes off. That's crazy. I don't know what happened, but he's gone docile for the last time I was there. Yeah, I, th hmm. I really think Sterling did something to it. Probably but shy. okay, so James and Joe, you guys have been doing this way longer, so. This is and <laughs> how many times have you had to shit in a bucket? <laughs> On investigation. Yeah, yeah. Like not just for fun or like, you know, for shits and giggles. Not doing an yeah. amber move. <laughs> I don't think I've ever shit in a bucket, but I definitely shit in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, but I have not done that, um, but I will say that I was at a location and was told that the bathroom facility, which is in a separate building, would be shut down. We couldn't use it, um, so we'd have to, like, go someplace else to use the bathroom or just, like, piss somewhere outside. So, uh, yeah, I went to go piss outside. I did that a couple of times, and then well, I did it again, and I looked up, and I'm like, oh, shit. There's a There's security a camera. camera. <laughs> <laughs> so I just looked up at it, I swear, and I just like I waved and like, oh, I hope you get a good laugh out of this. <laughs> and I just went, whoops. <laughs> Hopefully I'm gonna say, did you see that? Oh god. <laughs> uh, yeah, she uh, like I don't know if she's seen it or not, but yeah, you never... think she has that clip stashed away somewhere for a rainy day or some shit? Yeah, she wants something to laugh at. <laughs> <laughs> Since he did it three times, she's probably made like a little movie that's like, this is my blackmail video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, While we have these guys on, is there anything, and we'll start from the bottom and we'll go up this way, we'll go from James to Joe to Sin to Michael and then to the Goose and then to D-Nice. Anything to plug? Because I know that 
a lot of you have a bunch of events coming up and stuff. So we have the peeps here. Go ahead and let them know. Well, I have nothing really to plug. Um, you know, that's a bullshit ass <laughs> lie. I just heard you go on for twenty minutes last night talking about right? September to December. Oh, no, people heard last this, night. that, and the third. The, uh, the truth is, the, he doesn't uh, remember the dates. Yeah, I don't remember the dates. I'm looking at my phone right now. Uh, but what? one 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 thing I do want to plug, of course, is what I donated. You know, August sixth. Yes. Uh, for whoever wins that. Uh, that donation that I gave for an August 6th investigation at the Payne House in Coventry, Rhode Island. The Payne House is 1693. It's a goddamn old house. Um, wow. But so it's not um, just also, an old there's going to be two uh, great <laughs> investigators there as well alongside me. And, you know, there are tickets still on sale, limited left. Um, one one of them's uh, my bloody Galantine, uh, who is a, a huge TikToker with 550,000 viewers. Um, she's going to be there as one of the guests. And then uh, Matt Warner will be an L guest. So the three of us come join us August 6th uh, in Coventry, Rhode Island. You don't want to miss it. It's a great house. Very cool. Awesome. I'm adding that. I'm all adding the rest of the tears now. This was taking forever. Y'all got me talking. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, and don't worry. Not Joe's going to follow that up. Oh, geez. Yeah, I what, wait, I want James to talk about the All right, guys, I have to hop off. I got to take my kid to work. I love you. Okay, we'll see you later, D. Hi, D. <laughs> I love you, bye. bye. I love you, bye. Um, the vampire thing you're doing. Oh, yeah. Um, Because that's so, cool as shit. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for whoever else is interested, I am leading... I'm one of the tour guides for um, a Romania tour uh, with Patty Negri and Father Sebastian, where Ooh. November 6th through, I think, the uh, the following week, whatever, the November 16th or something like that, we're going to Romania. We're going to go to Hotel Transylvania, Vlad's Fortress, uh, Braun Castle, the Suicide Forest that rivals the Japanese forest, um, and so many other sites of 10 uh 10 days of adventure and nine days of staying at haunted hotels in Romania. Um, and uh, there's nothing to complain about that. It's a bucket list item for a lot of people. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. it could be a bucket list item that you check off uh, in November. You know, it's you people go on cruises go for, this, for this price. Why the hell not go to Romania and um, see where the vampire legend was created? So, James, do you make people sign a waiver before entering the forest? Uh, I don't. So I'm not. I'm not. The, it's mysterious. It's mysterious tours, which is uh, um, Maria, who leads the world's greatest, uh, world's largest ghost hunt. She actually is running the tour, so that's something that you would have to ask her. Somebody would have to ask her if they they have to sign a waiver. I'm pretty sure there's some sort of thing they have to sign due to liability issues. Whether you get lost in Romania, is it your fault or their, our fault? You know. So I. That, but that is an interesting. Yeah. Uh, ploy there uh because a lot of people have said to go into that forest and then uh eventually commit suicide so that's something yeah. that we don't want of course uh yeah. and i'm not yeah, hoping for it to happen but yeah that that's the part i was going at is it's a suicide forest so <laughs> you might want to you know tell people you can't commit suicide on our time <laughs> well i hope not you know <laughs> But I, I also think, too, you know, a lot of people go, I think a lot of people go there because of uh, that that kind of legend and do things there because of that kind of, like, mythos, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it just uh, seems to be a drawing place for people that uh, are lost in their lives and uh, or maybe uh, preternaturally affected. Who knows? Yes. Yeah. What Hoya Bachu Forest has always been on my bucket list, so... That would be something that would be really, really awesome. On come November. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just so it's my turn. No, it's oh. just Joe's just... coming to the light. Oh, Lord. My <laughs> turn. I'm, I'm, over here, I'm over here trying to find the information that I need. Real quick. Oh, no, it's Joe's. <laughs> Oh, yeah, let me find you over here. James kind of plugged you guys last night with the haunting and the haunting of Harrisville thing that you guys did. Uh, the Harrisville haunting. Yes. 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 And uh, right now it's on Paraflix. So, you know, if anybody wants to watch it, that's where you can go to see that. Um, but uh, also, we 
have a meeting tomorrow, tomorrow Saturday, yeah, so sometime tomorrow, and uh, I don't know, you might see it some other places, who knows, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> nice. So, nice. We're excited about that, and then I'm trying to find this freaking link here. <laughs> There it is. There it is. Joe found it. Yay. Yay. Oh, Lord. So, Yay for Joe. Hi, little buddy. So, oh, September. Watch your language. A child is around. He heard about pooping in a bucket. He got excited. Oh, yeah, buddy. That's my favorite, too. All right. <laughs> 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 Anyway, your link, Joe, you found it. Yay. Yeah, I found it. Um, anyhow, <laughs> no, we're doing, um, we're going to be in Virginia City. Uh, it'll be uh, September 16th through the 17th. I think there's something going on the 18th there. Uh, but uh, we're taking over Virginia City. Wow, wow. And, uh, yeah, we got all kinds of locations that we're going to be able to investigate, you know. Um, they have VIP tickets and other type of tickets, stuff like that. What kind uh, of locations? I'm very curious. Um, well, uh, let's see. Fields full of buckets? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bring your own bucket. This is a bring your own shit bucket. You think. <laughs> uh, USB. What's up? Uh... And so if I remember correctly here, I believe... Let me look at the schedule. Let me bring this up. Um, just quickly kind of go through this. So um, Piper's Opera House, Mackey Mansion is a couple that's mentioned here. Um, still getting, let's see, the Wash Show Club, Silver Queen. We're going to be staying at the Silver Queen. That's going to be wild. We took that thing over. Um, and there's some other places that are going to be announced here soon. So. But uh, let me uh, put this link in there because I'm like I'm all over the place right now because I'm trying to concentrate on looking at that information. Uh -huh. and, you know, I'm Joe and I, I can't I can't concentrate on two things at once. <laughs> but um, now there's going to be it's going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of uh, people there as well. Now, let me just go ahead and go back to this. Um, Back up over here. I am so glad my internet is really fast. How big of groups do you guys um like allow when you do public things? What's the largest number? It really depends on um, well for this it's a two day event, so you have stuff going on one day and then stuff going on the next. So um, it allows for more people to go but also not be overcrowded because there's a lot of different locations, so we can send a group to one location for a certain amount of time and just kind of rotate everybody. That's so, very convenient. Yeah, and being that everything is basically centered around the Silver Queen, that's where the majority of everyone is staying, um, everything is like within walking distance. So that's really cool, but we got... As, as James had mentioned, Patty's going to be there. Got the haunted side. Natalie Jones. I got a documentary, uh, and I've never met <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> it's like <laughs> we got a documentary over on her stuff, but uh, I've never met her before. Uh, we got the boys from New Reality. Um, got Vivian from uh, the Dead Hours. Oh, Ghost Club. I'm just running through this here real quick. Uh, Gavin and Paula from the Fantasmic Ghost Hunters. Um, we have War Paranormal, Central Utah Paranormal, Supernatural Eye. We got our boy Levy from Chasing Darkness Paranormal, uh, Hollywood Paranormal Detectives. Um, we have, let's see here, uh, Weeping Willow Paranormal. And, you know, the big attraction, me, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the reason to go. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, and this, you know, well, last year I went, um, they, they did an event. It was in Tahoe. And that was a little different for me. And this year is kind of a little different for me as well. Because when I do events, um, it's usually with 
like people who are not who are not on YouTube. So it's it's kind of weird. I'm gonna put this link in here. It, it's it's kind of weird, but at the same time, it's it's pretty cool. Um, and they're all cool people there. They don't they don't bite hard. So, but um, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun and it'll be pretty crazy. It's gonna be a freaking party. <laughs> I thought it was always a party when Joe's there. Well, I mean, that just depends. <laughs> I mean, if you actually see me at any any event, it's so funny because, like, I go to the events here, I'll talk to people and stuff like that, but you'll really see me kind of off to the side somewhere because I'm kind of like, it's an anxiety thing. So it's, it's kind of weird, but it also cracks me up because, like, some people like, so I heard these rumors that you go to these events and hook up with random women in the paranormal. It's like, dude, I wish. Thank you for making it sound like it's done. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <And> so, <laughs> it's, uh, we gotta look, we gotta let people in the paranormal. Do we? I get I get a joke. Send I just want to let you. you guys know I'm gonna get head off. I gotta put the guy, little guy to bed, but I'm glad I no can go find mom on quick. Thank you yeah. so much. I appreciate you. You have a good night. Yeah, you, you too. Jam. Good Bye, little buddy. Have good fun. Night. But, uh, um, let's see. For Raven Rose, four. Yep. <laughs> for Raven Rose Paranormal, I mean, we don't. I guess we don't do much for events yet. Um, I'm still kind of in the planning stages of a couple of them that I'm trying to put together in the next year or so. Um, but um, we will be at several different expos here in Iowa. If you go to the um, Raven Rose um, Facebook page, I will have those posted when those events are. Um, we've got one hopefully coming up in July um in cedar rapids um and then there'll be i believe one in the quad cities in november uh we are doing the cambry house summer solstice at nauvoo illinois um that is at the cambry house and farms uh owned by rebecca williamson um we will be there doing ghost tours and um kind of just like a little paranormal mini expo Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> in September, we will be at the Hinsdale House, September 9th and 10th, um, doing an investigation up there. Um, that'll be our first time there, so that will be very, very interesting. Um, never been there yet, and I've heard lots and lots of stories, so I'm kind of, kind of interested to see if it lives up to the hype that everybody gives it. Um, and then October, uh, we have a memorial night for um, my husband that died in um, June at the Bango Haunted Crib, where I bring in a bunch of different paranormal investigators and things. And we kind of do just a, a Q&A night, um, a meet and greet. Uh, people sell their merch and just kind of talk to the community because up here, the community is more closed lipped on the paranormal side of things. Um, people really don't like to uh, like to talk about it so much up in my area of the woods because it's just, everybody thinks they're crazy if they bring it up. <laughs> so, How do you survive out there? You're like one of the, like, I don't want to say craziest, but like, I, 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 I am, I'm in Iowa. Honey, Iowa? I am in Northwest oh. Iowa, Northwest <laughs> Iowa, and um, how I survive up here, Ash, you should know me by now. <laughs> I don't care. I come out. I, I I put myself out there. I, you know, we are what we are. We do what we do, and this is who we are. And if you like us, great. If you don't, oh well. It's all about the corn. <laughs> yeah. That the city died of grain. <laughs> okay, so they filmed Children of the Corn up here and they filmed, I believe, Puppet Master up here as well. Nice. So so yeah, it's all about the corn and the demons. 
I, I just gotta <laughs> ask though, when they filmed Children of the Corn, did they use corn, the real corn, or did they ship it in and no, make a set actually, of corn? They actually, they actually, um, what they did was they paid. I don't remember exactly how many, but they paid certain farmers to be able to use their cornfields. Hmm. It was actually filmed about two and a half hours away from where I'm at. Yeah, because I've heard on occasion they'll go to a place that's perfect and then they'll bring in a set that's identical to what they're looking for. Uh -huh. And I'm like, um, why? <laughs> I, as far as I know, like for Children of the Corn and for Field of Dreams, um, they did not have to like ship anything in. They just use the natural backdrop. Ooh, so, now you got me curious. When he cut the cornfield down to make the baseball field, did they uh -huh. really cut down a cornfield, or? Yes, <laughs> they did. Um, wow! If you go, if you go up to Dyersville, um, the they are they are actually now starting to schedule. What is it? Uh, I don't remember if it's. I think it's postseason uh, Major League Baseball games there. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Yep, they are actually scheduling, like, this last year was, was it the Red Sox and the Cubs, I think, or something like that? I don't know. But anyway, they actually brought in Major League Baseball, which is a big thing for Iowa because, you know, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is this movie is actually a true story because the premise of the movie was build it, they will come. And you're saying they built it and they are coming. Yeah, they're starting to they're starting to bring in Major League Baseball, which is kind of it, it's kind of creepy how it, it actually played out, you know. Wow. So yeah, it was built. It was built more, I think, for um, like little league and and just the community, and wow. it went from that to now they're starting to try and schedule bigger games and bring in bigger names and. So yeah, yeah. It, I'm it, with Joe it, and bringing in the money. <laughs> That's what it's really about. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It's always all about the money. Gotta um, afford those cornfields. No, I really want corn. <laughs> <laughs> Baby girl, I'll bring you some. Yes. Sweet corn is the best. Oh, Iowa, there is nothing better than Iowa sweet corn. Nothing better than Iowa sweet corn. Is Joe going to cook me some corn? Uh, I'm going to bring you some. Is that where the Olathe corn comes from? Uh, yeah. Olathe is Kansas, honey. Oh, there you go. There's some corn for you. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> Oh, Lance got some pretty sweet corn. And, no, Iowa farm raised sweet corn. I'll try sweet and find corn. me some of that. So, before we let you two, gents, do your thing, I have an update. We just had another $100 donation. So, that awesome. brings the total up to 900 Yeah, 900 so we still need three thousand uh, dollars, basically, which is round and about. We need about three thousand dollars. Now, these prizes that you get, I'm gonna cover everybody's heads up right quick. So you get. Uh -huh, I'm still in it. Ideas, Neo. Now I'm gonna switch you around. Huh. <laughs> Manners, Michael. Um. So the first tier spot, thirty dollars. So this is insane. Like thirty dollars gets you the chance to win a free night at Malvern, which I don't even know how much that actually costs. You've been there, right? Like how much does it cost for just one night? One night at Melbourne is I believe in between three hundred and fifty and four hundred dollars. See, you get that, you get a signed photo from Nick Groff himself, like he's mailing it to me for the winner. Whoever gets it gets hit like it's straight from him. And signed from Nick Groff. Uh, one free year subscription to Haunted Magazine that was donated by Daniel Clace. A nice. personalized charm by Tina Frick, who is one of the baddest witches I know. She And you can get it personalized to anything. Love, money, luck, like anything. And she actually does like does a little spell over it and everything. So nice. it's personalized just for you. 
You have the second tier that is a free ticket for the investigation whoa, with James Domingo. You forgot your four nights. Oh, yeah. I fucking forgot my shit. So <laughs> you also get free four nights at the asylum. So not only do you get the $400 on top of the Malvern Manor thing, you get four free nights with me. Holy shit. God damn it. I'm doing it again. Uh, four free UK. nights at Broken Bow Asylum. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm trying to do the math on how much it is. Oh. Um, you six nine about twelve hundred dollars. So you get that's like about a sixteen hundred dollar. Yeah, it's yeah. about a sixteen hundred dollar package for thirty dollars. You donate thirty dollars, you enter your spot. For every thirty dollars you enter, you just tell me what tier you want. You can donate on Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal. All of the information's in the comments. You For the second tier, you get the free investigation with James Anito at the Paint House in Rhode Island. That's the one with Matt Warner and my bloody Galentine. A pot of grass Rapucha sweatshirt from Tim Maley. He's uh, he is. He's oh, yeah, he yeah. squish him so fucking hard. Um, <laughs> two free nights at the Broken Bow Asylum. And then Raven Rose Paranormal T-shirt, which is donated by my sweet sin right there. Woo -woo. And then you get an autograph copy of Murray. It's a Murray photo with an autograph, autograph. Like that's just one of the greatest things you could ever get. An autograph copy. Josh Hurd uh, donated this on top of the night at Malvern Manor, which was awesome. For him. He donated the autograph copy of his film 1903, which is absolutely amazing. Nice. And it's going to be signed by Josh Hurd as well. And then on this flyer, it says one free night, but I up the ante because you know how as I am. Uh, two free nights at the Broken Bow Asylum. Yeah, but um, you put down 2023. Yes. Yeah. Okay, For next year, because sure. I'm booked out this year. Yeah. Okay, just making sure where, I was understanding is, that right. And where is Broken Bow Asylum? In Broken, Broken Bow, Bow Oklahoma. 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 Oklahoma, where the wind goes. We've been on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Southeast you know, Oklahoma. Funny. Is I didn't actually believe this. I saw it in a movie, and I didn't actually think this was like a thing, but it's real. I was in a bar, and I swear I almost got PTSD from this shit. Somebody saying that the stars at night shine big and bright, and every single person, like, no people that weren't even talking to each other, like, my, every single person and their mama stopped what they were doing and went <laughs> deep, deep in, in the, the heart, heart of Texas. Texas. And it was so fucking loud. I was like, what is going on? Why is everyone clapping? What are we doing? What is happening right now? The first time it's I heard that song, cool thing. Yeah, the first time I heard that song was on uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I think that's where I heard it from. I'm that is sure awesome. that's where I heard it from. And uh, I'm good. Oh, just I got goosebumps thinking about it. It was so loud. It was so disturbing. Everyone got violent real quick, and I didn't know why. Well, not violent, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, yes, because rowdy. clapping is a very violent activity. The way Texans do it when they hear that song fucking is. <laughs> mm, no, it was very uncomfortable. Okay, so... Hey, Hey, baby girl, I got to take off, so okay, I'm going to pop out. Um, let me know who wins that T-shirt, and just send me their info, and I will ship that shirt out. I will, boo-boo. I love you. Love you, too. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Have a good night, Cynthia. You, uh, plug your stuff in case you have to go soon, too. Yeah, so, yeah, I just got a, an email. I got to call somebody here shortly. But uh, plug your stuff, because I know you're on call for work. So Yeah. I don't um, so, I mean... Obviously, the Cryptic Paranormal Show is on every Thursday night from 8 to 10 right here on the RU Media Network. Um, it's me, Denise, and Heisenberg. We're the the uh, dive bar show of paranormal, as we like to say. Um, but yeah, we're, we're on every Thursday night, and uh, we have a great time. We had James and Carl on last night. It was a great time. Nice. Uh, a lot of times, but we really like to have like just local teams. Um, people we know in the field that just come on and we'll talk about anything paranormal or and shit what we ate today you know there's whatever comes up uh just like what we're doing right now right here just shooting the shit basically um so that's that um not really actually the next couple of weeks for the show or i'm going to be off because i'm having surgery next thursday um uh carpal Ooh. tunnel surgery on both of my hands so i'm going to be oh, handless for a couple of weeks yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I told Denise and, and Heisenberg if they want to still 
continue the show while I'm off. That's fine. I don't know what their their decision is yet on that, but hopefully they may come up with something so we can keep on. Um, other than that, there's really not a whole lot going on for us as far as uh, events coming up. We're going to be at MadCon, uh, MadCon 5 at, at Madison Seminary, uh, doing some live broadcast cut-ins and some live interviews with place. with people at the uh, at the event. That'll be fun. Um, we did it with Potographs for Pooches in April, and that was, a, or was it March? Well, in the spring. I can't remember what it was. It feels like it was so long ago already, but it was a great event. Um, we're going to do that again for them coming up next year when they have the event in Ann Arbor. Uh, so look out for that. Uh, me, personally, I just uh, I just talked to um, History Press about writing a book about Haunted Portage County, uh, just, uh, the county I grew up here in Ohio. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to start be, be start working on that. Uh, so that is really cool. Wow. I'm excited to do that. Um, I can't and also, wait to read a book that you wrote. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's it'll be, it'll be my first one. So hopefully, I, I figure the first one with some his, historical facts will be a good start. And then hopefully that'll continue with some other stuff that I want to do. Um, but also another project I got going with RU Media. Uh, David Wolliver, myself, Sean Gilmore, and Nick McWethy are going to be working on a new YouTube show called uh, uh, Mysteries of the Road. And we're going to be uh, kind of going around Ohio and, and chasing and, and researching some of the local legends of Ohio. Um, so, for instance, uh, like the Ohio Grassman, we're going to go interview a bunch of people, probably do a little field work. Um, it'll be interesting and we're coming at it from actually a very amateur uh point of view which will be fun and it's going to be it's going to be raw it's going to be just us being being us and having a good time and, and learning something and who knows maybe we'll catch something Sean which would be amazing be yeah so yeah. that that's really about it and that's right now for me with work and everything that's probably more than enough <laughs> um, about as much as i can handle because you know i still got two kids and a family and um so just keeping up with yeah. that is so is that show going to be online or yeah it'll be a youtube it'll be under the okay. ru media network uh umbrella um so it'll be youtube content like probably like a 45 minute to an hour sh or show episode we already got like six or seven different subjects we're going to be working on um, that's cool know, first episode uh, we don't have a location yet, but the first episode, since the ghost hunting thing is kind of our whole our wheelhouse for all of us, we're probably going to start kind of easing into it with a good good old fashioned ghost hunt, and uh, then we'll start chasing Brand the beasties. There. Yeah, we'll start changing uh, chasing the beasties and the UFOs and aliens around Ohio. So it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have some fun. I can't with wait. That. To, I can't yeah. fucking wait to watch it. Yeah, it's gonna be so greatness. Greatness. Yeah, I can't. It's fun. I really like the angle we're taking. It's really just raw and us kind of probably getting the shit scared of us out of nothing like a deer <laughs> running in the bushes, you know. <laughs> oh, it's got to be Bigfoot, right? You know. <laughs> I want to see I want to see Heisenberg get kidnapped and take it along for one, on one of these trips keep, with you guys. I know. I, we keep telling him we're going to use his bait for everything. Yes, he doesn't want to be a part of the show, but you know what? He's going to be bait. <laughs> he perfect. would be... He, he is. Yeah. He's the perfect bait. I he cannot can tell you. He just exudes it everywhere. <laughs> 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 He's great with ghost hunting, man. But when it comes to anything cryptozoological or, or UFOs or anything like, he's he's not down, oh, which makes him perfect a perfect subject. <laughs> just put, put him in the field, put him in a field with his pants down and a, and a sign hanging over his ass saying yeah. "Welcome to Earth, bitches." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take me. <laughs> he would genuinely, I think. Flip. He's like he's. It's it's yeah. weird how. So I get him every, and I think it's yeah. like I, I kind of feel bad at this point because I love him to death, uh -huh. but I have psychologically scarred him because about two years ago <laughs> they were talking about black eyed children. And I was yeah. like, well, what are you going to do if one's standing outside your window like one is now? And he went. <laughs> so every five, every five, and so five every thirty seconds, he's like. Day, Every Thursday they've been on. I'm gonna be like, look behind you, and he, and it's gotten real slow. Like he just goes like this, but he's like, because the one time I don't actually look is gonna be the time it's fucking man. I know. So I've like psychologically gotten. He's got the to selfie him. mode on. Like, okay, everything is okay. All right, there <laughs> you go. Look into the camera yeah. on the screen. Yeah. Like, be like, 
Do you all have to have mirrors around me yeah. so I can see 360? <laughs> yeah, when we used to do the show in the the uh, radio station, when we were actually broadcasting this on radio before COVID times, the radio station, I swear to God, the radio station we were in, the, the office we worked out of was, uh, haunted. was definitely haunted because the, the doors would open and shut by themselves. Things would just fall off the table, just weird stuff. And somebody, we had a psychic on, and she could see the video screen because we would broadcast it all over Facebook and everything too. And she would just, she was constantly saying, you got somebody behind you. And like, she was serious. So he just, just kept seeing the move. <laughs> it's to the point where he was almost off the, the camera completely, just looking at the, the closet behind him. But yeah. But uh, yeah, I got to get off here, guys. Um, thank you so much. Everybody, please chip in and help out Broken Bow. I can't yes. wait for the day that I can get down there and check it out myself. Thanks for coming, brother. Yep, you better you better believe it. Um, so you shut up. Feel well. Give us your you money. Sh shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag shut up. <laughs> I love you guys. We'll see you later. And remember, from the Cryptic Paranormal Show, don't be an asshole. We'll see you later. <laughs> 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 Okay. My nose is sweating. So I guess it's my turn. So I actually have a couple projects coming up that I am going to go to some historic locations with a medium and uh, investigation friend of mine and delve into kind of some underground history get some answers one is to prove if a legend actually did happen or if uh it's just purely legend i could tell you more but that would ruin the surprise of the video <laughs> is there any uh ley lines <clears throat> ley lines are everywhere yeah are there people gonna be in it uh there will be three people in it <laughs> all right we narrowed it down we're getting there <laughs> <laughs> and uh a couple of investigations i'm going to be doing is to go and kind of preserve history in a way i'm going to some historic sites that people may have kind of forgotten about or didn't know were there so i wanted to bring awareness to them and see you know if i can connect with who was you know there and uh, get some stories, maybe, hopefully. And then June 27th, I'll be hanging out at Old Park Hotel, investigating there. And then I go back on the July 18th for Stranger Things with Dustin Perry from TV. Uh, I think he was Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters International. Yep, yep. Is he the guy with the spiky hair? Yep. yep. He is He's a cool, cool man. Guy. He is so nice. Yeah, yes, I met him up at Ashmore State. I hung out, we talked to him. Did he? He, he does a lot of the potograph stuff. Anyone yeah. who does anyone who does shit for animals is cool beans in my book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So looking forward to meeting him, and uh, of course I got a plug. August twentieth, I'll be fourth investigation at broken bow asylum and uh actually you're gonna love this i wow. found out today we are full we cannot invite anybody else what our, the roster's full well look at you guys they got 12 people and she goes 13 county view i hope ashley will be okay with that i was like no, you can't come anymore. <laughs> I'm like, great, y'all booted me. <laughs> Fuck off. No, so, you, you seriously, you can't come anywhere, though. <laughs> I'm just talking with you. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because I'm listening as the co host. So, you know, <laughs> that would be hilarious. I'm yeah, gonna the co host is a little I'm going to do a Head count as y'all walk in and stop that last person. Be like, oh, sorry, one too many. You got to go home. Just to fuck with them. <laughs> I'll make sure the last one to be like, man, 
I got my co-hosting privileges revoked. You got to go to your car and sit there for at least 15 minutes so people think it's real. Yeah. Or, drive, in your, in your or drive to the gas station and make it look like I really <laughs> left. Um, so Matt Benton is in the chat. Hello, Matt. And Sarah, I will get to your questions. And just yeah, in the chat. But, uh, okay. Also, the November, I'll be in Jefferson for the HHL. Who? HHL. I'm not sh- uh Phoenix uh Jansen's booked it. We're all staying in a bed and breakfast and going to Jody's event. But what the fuck is an HHL? Is it dealing with hockey? Uh to be honest. Hit, run and leave or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what it stands for. I was just told <laughs> We're going to the HHL, and Jody's like, when we were booking the room with her, she's like, are you going to HHL? We're like, I think so, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what it I is. I need you to find out where the fuck you're going before you go there. <laughs> Shamali. Shamali. It might turn into the NFL. <laughs> I'd be fine with that. <laughs> so... No, I am. I am looking at a location to do a, a documentary on Matt. I want Matt to be a part of that too. And, uh, the other guys from the Harrisville Haunting, along and adding too. But I'm, I'm like, I'm waiting to see what happens with the outcome of this location. Oh. So. Okay. Yeah. So. I- so I, I just think it's it funny up. that I own a location that all these motherfuckers be like, oh, we do documentaries in haunted locations, but oh, nobody ever try and do nothing in my neck of the woods. Well, I will, about talk, old I, will, Stormy D and shit. I will talk to you after this. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. In Oklahoma, I'm in Tennessee. So the, the it's not that so far. The HHL is the History, Haunts, and Legends Paranormal Conference. So that's close. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> the NFL may show up still. That's the one in Jefferson, right? That's the one in Jefferson, right? Yes. Okay. I know what you're I know what you're talking about. I've never heard it called the HHO. The shorthand in that shit. Hey, we gotta Matt. keep up with the millennials. Matt. <laughs> yes, us generation okay. X are just kinda of behind the, the eight ball here. So you gotta be um, careful about just... eight balls. They may not understand what that means. Oh yeah. Well, now they're gonna they're miss to shake them, it, know. Michael. I dios mio. <laughs> so this guy. Oh. So um, Sarah, oh, it's not an actual asylum. It is called the Broken Bow Asylum because the people that I bought it from ran it as a haunted house after it sat there for about eight years. Um, empty. It was originally a nursing home, and then it became a trauma center. While it was still running as a nursing home, the other wings opened as a trauma center, um, a level E offender school, which is basically like a halfway home for juvenile offenders. It became an alternative school, a nursery. They tried to build a church in there, but the priest got shoved and shit got thrown around, and they were just like, nope, something's evil. We're leaving. Um, it was all the idea. It was also a fire train, <laughs> training facility. So the fire department used to use it to run drills and stuff in there. And I talked to a bunch of the guys that used to sleep in there when they were on, you know, training schedules and stuff. And like, we wouldn't sleep alone. Cause you get grabbed, you get touched. Like things just, things just happen to you all the time in there. It's really weird. Like just how interactive they are with us. Yes. Um, but it was never awesome. an actual yeah, asylum. Now the thing is with that is it costs money to, change that business name and like i pay for everything out of pocket and everything that i make goes back into the building and i don't think you guys realize that taking care of a 70 year old place is not cheap by or any. easy and it was in horrible condition like before i before i took it over it was it was bad and it still is like kind of funky in the north wing but it's like way better than what oh, it yeah. used to be but by getting the rest of that the roof done on that north wing you've seen it michael like if that roof were fixed i could get that so much cleaner inside of there but until roof is fixed 
Yeah. It's a moot point. Like you can't keep out the crackage. You can't keep out the rain. You can't. You can't keep anything out that's going to yeah. destroy it. Yeah, but when you fix the roof in the north, I mean, you could sell that room of the technology as a bonus sleeping room. You could sleep with tech. Yeah, but I need to. <laughs> hey, <get> extra. <laughs> part of the roofing that I'm doing is redoing the slats. So, like the actual roof in the rooms it's it's built really weird because it doesn't the ceilings aren't like vaulted all the way up it kind of like comes short yeah. and so you could put like carpeting or padding up on the top so you keep all the dirt and dust from all that other crap up in that yeah i'd leave the like, raptors open though space. it's just so it's cool. weird yeah right. it's yeah. Weird the way the building's built it's very weird so the north wing is saying it's got central air no, so the way it's built is it's a northern style type. Building. I was made with the, with the hole in the ceiling. I know, but it's it, the, it and really the fact that it's like, the north. But it also has its own type of ventilation, though. It has its own ventilation system because it's a northern style type building, which is really weird to see in this area. That it has these triangular slats on each of the main faces of the wings, mm -hmm. and they would put it down during the winter to get like the air flowing through, or they'd close it to keep the air from coming in. But during the summer, they'd open it up to have the breeze flowing through the building, it, like just mm -hmm. pushes through. And you can sit there and close it off to, for like different sections of the wings. And then okay. what they would do was push all, during the winter, they'd push all of the cold air into this one back room and they use that as the morgue. Oh. Matt says, I want to film there. All right, hold on, Matt. I, I got this one. Okay. Um, now, if you, want to be, if you want to be a part of it, you, you are always more than welcome to, to film with me, Matt. Always, you're like, you know, you're like a key player there. Well, I'll talk to Ashley later yeah. after this, and we'll, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Ooh, Ashley's um, got a filming war going. Um, no, no, Matt and I, no, no, we're, we're, we're secret I mean, thing. We the, no, we, They're we together. Have, not like that. <laughs> Look, I know it's, I know it's Pride Month. Oh, so you're a awesome, team, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know. They did the that documentary they were talking about earlier, Michael. Yeah. That they did that together. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just teasing Joe. I know. Um, I know. <laughs> but uh, so where is Broken Bow derived from? That was actually the brothers that came in that did they built a timber and logging company in the area. So what they did was they paid the Choctaws like 50 fucking cents, a very, very fucking small amount for what they ended up getting. Basically, um, booted them out of the area and they took over that whole entire strip that that goes like from where my asylum is to across the street. Like that whole entire strip used to just be like part of their lumber mill mm. and everything. That whole area used to just be incorporated into their business and they would just chop everything down. Then, um, they moved there from Broken Bow, Nebraska, and that's actually why it's called Broken Bow, because the natives called the area Hocha Town, and that's the area that if you drive like 10, 15 minutes down the road, you go into from it being like a little bitty, kind of like rural area to nothing but the wide so open country on the lake and <laughs> mountains, but now it's become really touristy. They call it the, the oh my God, what was it called? Any casinos? They do. They have a small casino. All right. And they're, they're built, they got a saloon. But they're building a huge one right now. Wow. Right, like, 20 minutes down the road, they're building a huge fucking casino. It's this a huge casino. casino. There you There's go. a casino coming into uh, Bristol, Tennessee, like, five minutes away from me. I'm like, well, if they're going to put one up, here comes some more. Exactly. Yeah. And the one that they have right now is real small. It's, like, right next to the gas station in one of the hotels. It's, like, real – it's, like, a little – it looks like a little warehouse, basically. They yeah. just put like a dome on with some gambling letters on it. Hmm. It's, it's, real it's so janky. funny when you drive past it because you're like, oh my God, that's a that's casino. A casino. <laughs> yeah, it's really sketchy looking. <laughs> you know that if you come out at the wrong time, you're going to get jacked. Like whatever you won, you're going to end up getting it taken from you. It's It can be a very sketchy area sometimes. It's like, Much like Green Bay. Yeah. Being in Vegas, that was crazy. It didn't matter where I went, even like the dollar store or 7 Eleven. Their slot machines. It was, I was like, wow, <laughs> it's insane. I haven't been to Vegas since '03. Uh, I lived in Vegas for a very short time. Get the hell out of there. 
Ugh. The week we were there was 107 every day. Talk about splinters. Yeah, yeah. I like, hit like 120. Like the first week I was there, I hit 120. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> For me, there is a, it's too hot, actually. Well, we were get, I was getting to that point. I yeah. love hot weather. That's my thing. I love hot weather. Uh, That's but, dry heat, though, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Humidity. Yeah. When you, now, when you get to Wisconsin, you get the humidity up Wisconsin, then we get some nasty storms. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. Game on. Yeah, don't forget Matt's question. Unless you've been on a swamp, I will get to it. Oh, my God. You know what, Michael? <laughs> I will fight you. She's going to boot me off. You're gonna, I'm really going to be that. You're going to be that 13th person. And I told you to go take your car for five minutes. I'm not going to let you in at all now. Just wait until she starts talking like Kermit. <laughs> don't fuck with me. I'm <laughs> over. She plays um, Elmo as she closed out our shows on Monday nights. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes you guys make me do Cookie Monster. Oh, yeah, that too. For every impression that I do, you have to donate $2. Bam. Not y'all. It's people watching. But y'all too. Whatever, you know. <laughs> and if you get her to snort like so much, you have to donate $5. Yes, please. Um, and if so you mention said, the bucket, it's ten. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah, bring a already a shit ton of money. Ah, <laughs> <get> it. <laughs> it was a poo pun again. Oh. Uh, so He's running said, away with it. What, what sort of protections do you have in place when you have tours going through? So I actually always make people do intentions before they go in, which is basically. So Michael's been there. I tell them. To say out loud, you do not have permission to follow me home. You do not have permission to attach your energy to me. You do not have permission to use my energy, blah, 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 like, can, all, like, that good stuff. And then I also have all different types of cleansing tools on hand because, like, prayer doesn't work for everyone. You can't just sit there and say, like, Catholic rites to somebody who's agnostic or, like, Wiccan or some shit and, like, have it work the same way. So I have different cleansing tools for all different types of backgrounds and faiths. I even have like crystals and different things like that for people who are more metaphysical than, you know, that type of stuff. Um, and then. Don't forget the I, other thing you do. Please you, and thank uh, you. You lay rules down for the spirits. You're like, you oh, yeah. can't throw things at people. You can throw it near them, but not at them. <laughs> I do. Um, we make sure that we have our boundaries set in place. And I think it's, it's funny because people, when they hear that I'm a teacher, they're like, you're you're a teacher but i think if anyone wanted to ever see me like not inside classroom because it'd be weird i don't want a bunch of grown-ass people in my classroom <laughs> but if you were to see me inside Damn. of the asylum the way that <laughs> i interact with them or like our interactions it's very like now are we gonna mind our manners today are we gonna make a choice like are we gonna make oh, a choice yeah. are we in a good enough mood to do this you know talking it through and coming out like that and whatnot um, what about silver crosses? Do you hand out silver crosses too? I actually do have those on hand just in case people who are. Oh, that was just a wild guess. I, I do. <laughs> I, have, I have silver bullets too, man. Silver bullets? Oh, man, no, you expect a girl? It's, 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 no, wait, wait, wait. Isn't is a silver bullet for the alley? No. No. Alley, so, no, no. That's something totally different. Something. Yeah, I know. We won't mention it because I don't. I know she doesn't like mentioning the name. No. Yeah, Werewolves um, won't even go in there. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. If we do the documentary there. You don't need to lay down any kind of rules. We need to like you know. I mean, if we get killed in there, then we have a great documentary. Um, but, oh, uh, so you're doing the Blair Witch style. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, hey, oh, that's God, pretty no. interesting. Ooh, I should watch that ooh, the other day. Um, but, uh, do, does it have power there? I do, but um, for Sometimes. right now, it's just, yeah, for right now, it's just the power ports. Like, it's the portable charging stations and stuff. But they actually have, like, the outlets for, like, plug-ins and stuff, not just, like, USB ports and things like that. They have lights on them and things and all that stuff because I'm rewiring the whole building. The whole building needs to be rewired. So bring so a I generator just off. in case. Yeah, I keep it turned off. That way it doesn't Make sure the generator is outside, though. But also that way I could pass inspection. Oh, I you can get a handheld generator. 
Uh, I suppose, yeah. My my brother had a, a generator he put it in a small cottage one day and knocked out his daughter. Um, when so... in a hotel room that really wait, wait. Up so much. Whoa, 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 whoa! Back up. How does a generator that's sitting still knock somebody out? Uh, well, for as small as the cottage is, uh, they it was I think it was a, it was a big generator. It wasn't like a a small one. Uh, and so his wife and his daughter were sleeping in the same room with the generator. And it just created like carbon monoxide. So, oh, oh, okay. I'm thinking kind of like she out. hit it or. No, 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 no. It, it, it fell it was, on her. <laughs> no, she had to go to the hospital because she was consumed with car- carbon monoxide. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, they learn how it goes and. That's why in Napa, Wisconsin, we just got to keep them outside because they're mostly big. So, That's folks, if you want a carbon monoxide free zone, donate. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, uh, to answer Matt's question, the what kind of evidence has been captured there? So, <laughs> all different types of EVPs, very distinct voices, and you catch catch them multiple times. Like, it's like when you ask for a certain person, you get their voice every time you're trying to, like, interact with them. Um, we've had in front of at least 15 people this in this one instance had things just lift up off the ground in front of everyone, and just go and like fly across the room. Like, can you do that again? And just watch it again and just go boom. And I go flying across the room. But that's happened multiple times, like with different like sizes of groups of people. But the largest group we had was like about 15 people when that happened, when Daryl came down for that uh, October event they did right before I became the owner. And then um, we've had, so they use like doors. We use the doors as kind of like a dousing rod. Can you open it for yes and close it for no? And it does it like intelligently. And these doors are heavy as shit. Like no wind is going to sit there and be making them draft the way that they move. It's a very intentional open and shut. Yes and no. Yes and no. Very intelligently. And it went on for like five minutes. We're like, thank you for your time. And it stopped. You know, um, we've had full shadow people, apparitions, uh, during Death Walker, and that's finally going to premiere in the U.S. in August. Uh, he caught, and I, I can't say because I mean, you know, but he watch out for that because that's one of the the main. It premieres shows. on August twentieth. Yeah, it's the day that we're going to be at the asylum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he actually caught something that. I mean, I see it every day. I see it every time I'm there. You know, but he actually caught it on camera. And I'm just like, okay, cool. This is awesome because it's always those times when I'm walking, you know, by myself and I'm just doing my like chill sessions with them and I call light therapy sessions with them. I really just chill with my ghosts Mm -hmm. and just kind of talk things out. Um, And things just like get thrown or you see just people walking by back and forth and not just because of what I can do. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know if somebody else were in the room, they could see these shadows and like what's happening in there. Mm -hmm. Um, but just all types of activity. People get scratched, pushed, touched. Um, very uh, particularly, thrown. yeah. There's one lady who likes an older lady who is part of the nursing home that she likes to bite. She used to like to bite ankles. And a bunch of the nurses that used to work there used to told me about that story. And we've had people leave with bite marks around their ankles because she comes to them like that. Wow. Um, we've had things move all the time. Or they, they steal your shit. You can have like your keys on you somewhere and they end up in a place that you never even like went to that night. You'll go back and look around everywhere and just like you've exhausted all efforts of going to the same place that you were. So you try and go somewhere else. That's what I've learned to tell people. Like if you can't find it, go somewhere you weren't that night because you'll end up finding it. And one of the cool things that happened there was a friend of mine I was investigating with, Andy, if you remember him got yeah. scratched on his arm and every time we would i put my ir camera on his arm to talk about the scratch black bars came across the screen and started going down the screen 
<laughs> it was like, and then the he would say, okay, well, enough about the scratch. Let's go on to this. And all of a sudden, the picture would become clear again. Was that after I left? Uh, Might have been, yeah. I think it was after I left because yeah. I don't remember that. I, I don't remember most of that interaction though. And the well, last like, f- so he got minutes. scratched before you left. It was when we were in there <laughs> yeah. and you were like mess with them. Kind of fun. And no, I wasn't messing with him. No, was, you, you said that you told the spirits to mess with us. Cause we were in there oh, just yeah. being funny. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that's when the first scratch happened. And then later on in the evening after you left, he's like, hey, I think the scratches might be disappearing or something. And so I went to look again. And the black bar, sure enough, as soon as his arm is visible, starts to appear. And then when I take the camera away from his arm, back to crystal clear video. Jeez, that's wild. Um, the... <laughs> So, and she said that's not good. You, you have to realize that, first of all, scratches don't don't mean that something's demonic. Right. And no. That's like that's like the biggest misconception. And, They're just and, letting you know they're there. Yeah, and it's yeah. really dangerous to go into a location and be like, oh, they scratch me. You automatically then have that fear, that hostility, that, like, offstandish presence in your nature, like your energy. They can feel you you've mm-hmm. automatically shifted the mood and the energy of that location by reacting to something like that so like when i didn't say you said it was demonic i'm saying like even when they're scratching it's not that they're trying to hurt you I'm getting to that point they're not like doing it to be like malicious they're Unless doing it, comes it in threes, they're trying... right? no even then even what's then? the first what's the first three fingers that touch someone when you go out to reach them well yeah uh, these yeah. three yeah. it takes that much energy just to sit there and reach out so by the time you know those two would hit they've used up all their energy in that one swift movement they're trying to reach out and grab you or just touch you like they just want to touch someone again you know like and, and you can tell the difference between well absolutely. if you're the best together yeah. you can tell the difference yeah. or if you've come across it you know or... there's a there's a very big difference and yeah like, I haven't scratched yet any location I've been to. So I have a particular spirit who likes to mimic that shit. He does it on purpose to s- try and scare you. He's a teenager who was a dill hole, and he, just, <laughs> he likes doing it to try and fuck with people. Awesome. Like plain and simple. He just he yeah. does it to try and fuck with people, a, and it's hilarious. A, spirits can be dicks. DVR or security system. It's hilarious. And, and there is one spirit there that. Once he decides he hates you, you're done. You will never, ever get back in his good graces. No. Not if you try the hardest? Probably not, especially if you're a male. Probably not. Then I guess he won't like my plasma ball. Him. I I tried the last time, and he was like, nope. Well, yeah, some spirits can be like that, because I I know friends of mine that had that happen to him, too. Uh, uh, In fact, uh... Uh, Roland, uh-huh. Cynthia's Roland. When he went, yeah. when he went to, um, I believe it was Melvern, and he stepped in the closet where uh, I forget what spirit that is. Uh, Inez, Inez's uh, room. He stepped in the mm-hmm. closet, and it took him three weeks to get back in her good graces. So, um. Which is saying something because Roland's the type of person that you know. I feel like a ghost can never be mad at him. Like, <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> right? Like, <Absolutely> yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't think so, but yeah. I mean, that he told me that story, and it's like oh. I didn't think a ghost would ever be upset with me, and that was blown out the window. <laughs> so Rich is in the chat. So Rich has actually been there. I think his his family, Rich, Edie, Sean, the whole group. They also have some people come with them from like work, just random friends and stuff. Sometimes or other. Uh, the last time I met like their whole family, like all of the Fennell brothers, which were like a billion of them, uh, <laughs> but they were all awesome. But uh, they, <sighs> the things that they've captured, it's just, it's amazing. Cause they, the interactions they get are way more profound than any group. And I, I do believe it's not necessarily just because of the frequency in which they visited us, but the energy that they bring in there, it's very lighthearted. They're very 
sweet, open people, except for when someone asked for a prayer one time. It was me, Rich, Edie, Sean, and I can't remember who else was with us. But Nick does not like prayer. That's what I call him. That's his name because we have an NDA with his family for shooting and stuff. Hmm. Um, He does not like prayer. He does not like crosses. He does not like things of that nature. Like, you can wear a cross, but if you, like, start, like, holding on to I've noticed that when people, like, start holding on to it or, like, doing things like that, they start getting not necessarily attacked, but fucked with more. And it's um it's interesting. Well, one of these spirits, we were like, what can we do for you? And they asked for a prayer. So we were like, okay, we'll give you a prayer. And I was like, I knew he was, I knew Nick wasn't going to like, but he also can't just dictate what happened, like not letting other spirits gain the closure or whatever they need just because it bothers him. You know what I'm saying? It was like, no, we, so we did the whole, no, we need to work together. It's fine. We'll deal with you later. If you want to be mad, be mad at me. Don't be mad at anyone else, you know, so we're going to do the prayer. So we did the prayer and like immediately afterwards, it just got real funky in there. And so we all went outside and started cleansing and did like the whole big prayer thing and like got everything off and, you know, went back again. But it was, it was very interesting because the interactions they've had with Nick since then have changed. Wow. Like he, he remembers it. You know what I'm saying? They remember these things. They remember your face yeah. when you come back into a place. They remember your energy. They remember what you did to them. It's very interesting to see that how intelligently they interact with all of our guests and stuff. Or who you're I with. like this. <laughs> you are just filling my head full of ideas. It's had, I, had, I trademarked it's them. What we do. <laughs> <laughs> For me. Um so Sarah, I she said, have there ever been attempts to relieve the suffering of the spirits there? I don't believe anyone who's actually there is suffering anymore. Um, you can ask Michael, uh, but I, so what I do is I call them white light sessions. It's basically like having therapy sessions with ghosts. I do not believe in crossing them over. No matter what you say, you don't know where you're sending them. Like, where you know, do they go? You, right, you'll be like, you can find peace, whatever, but you don't know exactly what that person did. Like, you don't know how that after life system, scoring system works, you know? You don't know if you're actually going to send them to peace and i've had a near-death experience myself i've seen that light that light that everyone we get a lot of evps what are you afraid of and this isn't just in the asylum it's a lot of places i always ask what are you afraid of and a lot of the times they get the light and all different types of voices and never through spirit box always through an evp i don't really do spirit box stuff i like just audio recordings and especially inside of the asylum no one i think the people that stay there is because most of them, it was their only home. A lot of them, it was the last home that they knew. It was the place where they felt cared for and comforted. Also, the people that are there from the trauma center, those were traumatic deaths. So obviously, you know, they're still just kind of necessarily stuck because one of them, I was like, you know, you're, you're welcome to leave. You're welcome to, you know, find whatever peace it is. I don't ever force anything out or be like, I'm going to cross you over now. What I do is like, is there anything you'd like to talk about today? what's bothering you and i go like wing to wing room to room and just do like interactive sessions with them and i don't record it i don't sit there and like put it on youtube and it's not everyone else's business it's a personal relationship it's just like sitting there and speaking to friends you know what's bothering you how can i help right. you what you're struggling with right now mm -hmm. um and it's like they're a family you know, there exactly and they've grown I never, I, this has really changed the way that I think about it because I never truly thought that you could change a spirit. I thought, you know, if you're an asshole in life, you're an asshole in death, which is true, but you can also become a better person in life. And I think Nick is like proof of that. You know, he went from being aggressive, like in your face, like he would even like get real shitty with me. And I was like, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to judge you. Just what can I do for you? Like you're in pain. How can I help you? He had never really had any family. He was in and out of juvie by the time he was 13. He lived in a halfway home because none of his family members would take him. He killed himself by the time he was 17. You know what I'm saying? Like he struggled. Yeah, he acts like a dick to a lot of the guys and a lot of the people that come in there, but he there's so much more to him. And so our relationship, it got really weird, actually. It got to the point where he like kind of got like enamored with me. Almost. It, it got really weird because I had people who didn't even know me coming up to me and be like, do you know that you were like, yes, he won't go away. Like I set my boundaries in place. He's never supposed to fall. 
but he found a way for about four months to like stalk me basically like it it got weird and we're like okay but you know we set our boundaries again and so now we're good but it did it got to the point where he was like fuck you bitch get out of here to be like (laughs) (laughs) it's really weird it's really weird yeah you see and that's the thing um that i noticed is a lot of people when they go to location and if they go there repeatedly you do have to develop a, a some sort of like relationship with the spirits to get them to get them going you know get mm-hmm. get that interaction hails i've been to hells many times and it's like if i go into a certain area and you know the atmosphere of of a place can change you just know something's not right here okay this is cool a lot of times the atmosphere will kind of change a little bit it's like okay this isn't right here well, somebody's upset here <laughs> so somebody said something or did something that they didn't appreciate so then you kind of like hey look i don't know what happened here man you know wasn't me but hey you know people right and that then, then that changes then you know i've had and they weren't trying to scare me you know they were letting me know they were there because i asked hey if you're here with me let me know you know in some way shape or form and i'd have little rocks tossed my way they weren't trying to hit me they had no intent yeah. on hitting me they just throw in a rock saying here i am which is really cool um, or they would like some people would say it was it's a hiss and it kind of sounds like a hiss but they'll let you know they're right there like right in front of you it could also be like a psst. Cool. you know what it's, i'm saying like it's right. like the same kind of thing but you only hear the tsst part right. and, be, and to be quite <laughs> honest when you when you when it's silent and you hear that and it's kind of like whoa <laughs> it's a little startling um but yeah you gotta go in you know when you go to these places you gotta get kind of put yourself in their shoes um I'll, like some of us will sit around and just talk about like hunting or fishing which just whatever you know seeing if we can get some sort of interact we'll talk about food <laughs> it doesn't right. matter you know they just you're just there treat them treat them as if they're you know they're alive because right. to a certain point, they kind of are alive. Yeah, just exactly. Alive different, like differently. That sounds exactly. really weird to say, but no, that's exactly how it should be, though. Because like one of the craziest things I've ever captured in there, and I just think it's really funny. Because you know, we always say like we interact with like old ghosts. You know, we're like interacting with history, so we always expect them to be like old, old. But um, we were talking about food. Food is another thing. Food is a trigger for everyone. Everyone loves food. Don't ever get that twisted. So one day we were talking about snacks, and I was like, what kind of snacks can I bring you guys next time? Because I always bring you gifts. What kind of snacks would you like? I know you can't really eat them per se, but like, you know, just what can I bring for you? And I got EVPs, and these were three different voices. One said Doritos. (laughs) One said chocolate. And the other one said a Mountain Dew chocolate now you'd be running to the to the ship bucket <laughs> does chocolate make you poop darren chocolate is a natural laxative if you have too much is of it, it? oh yep. my gosh well no one uh, said being a shit ton of uh, chocolate darren i would, I would, I would bring... never reach that point <laughs> um, it doesn't take much for me because I'm, la- I'm lactose with milk i would bring um Sometimes I bring uh, like whiskey or something like like that with me when I when I'm with yeah. the because some of them I like, love liquor, um, cigarettes in mm-hmm. one section of the dam. You know, really not supposed to smoke in there, but I get that. I, I was getting the uh, you're different, you're good, go ahead. Um, <laughs> but no, I would I would light up a cigarette and I would ask, do you want a cigarette? And through the EVP, you would hear yes, and it sounds it sounds like a black gentleman, which is really cool because we do know that. You know, there, there were a lot of white people in that area <coughs> who were treated like shit, but who worked there. And that's the other thing, too. When you're there, you really got to be respectful. Because a lot of those people were not, because the color of their skin, were not treated very fair. So I would light up a cigarette, and I would just hold it out. I know this thing can't smoke. Like, <laughs> I, I know it can't. But it was just the gesture itself. Mm-hmm. And I've got quite a few EVPs, and I mean, it, it was really cool. And I, I freaked out some ladies <laughs> when I did that. They, they were just like, "What?" I do the same really thing. EVPs. I do the same thing at the Bonnie and Clyde Ambush Museum over at the Kill site because he's always there, and I always leave cigarettes. But the 
second to last time I was there, he just, and I know I fucking sound crazy when I say shit like this, but he was like, he was pissed at me because I always bring him cigarettes, but he can't actually smoke it. So I was like, okay, well, how about we share? So I lit one up and was like doing like this, like over to the side and like holding it up for him. You know what I'm like? Mm -hmm. It was doing like that. And I swear it was like, it was just different. And the people who were there with us were like, what's going on? Like the energy just feels real, like light now. And like, cause he's happy. He's finally getting his fucking nicotine fix after like 70 years, bro. Like, <laughs> Somebody literally just tried to call me on Instagram. What in the world? Oh, I thought it was like a virus. That. You're getting you can't that either. Yeah, you I can. Didn't, I didn't so, know you could call people on Instagram. Wow. <clears throat> so, Back in my day. <laughs> so I got, a, I got a question for you. What's up? So as old as the asylum is, uh -huh. and back in the day, uh, beef jerky was a thing, right? Yeah, huh? So I wonder what happened if you brought in a package of just not the, the stick beef jerky, but old time like the real beef piece. jerky. Right, bring that in once and see what what kind of reaction you get out of it. Well, here, here's the issue: beef jerky will not last around me. So <laughs> I was going to say, I actually will devour it before it makes it to the door. Oh, me great. and beef jerky? I'm like a fucking Sam Squanch, yo. Give me that shit. I know that shit ain't real. Jack's these commercials. Let me tell you something. I don't play behind my fucking beef jerky. That's my road trip snacks. That's my everyday snacks. That's my snacky <laughs> snacks. I could do my breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I would not even fucking complain about it. I'd, I'd just be curious to see what would happen because, you know, you're down in... You, you can know. ask... You, when you come, you can bring them some beef jerky, but guess who's going to eat it after you're done? <laughs> this guy. So see, there's another the funny, experiment. Go ahead. I'd say the funny thing is I could totally see Ashley... In the commercial, fighting the Sasquatch for the beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stepping on fucking Sasquatch for some jerky. Don't get me twisted, bro. I'll be stepping on his big ass hairy toes, be like, "Let go of my jerky. That's my jerky. I don't know yet." That'd be a great, that'd be a great commercial. <laughs> I know it'd be like, okay, we gotta retire the Sasquatch. How are we gonna do that? Let's go get that <laughs> Ashley <laughs> chick. She'll do it. <laughs> Just <laughs> slap you with it. <laughs> I, I just love the faith that you have in me that I could take on a Bigfoot. You the realist. You got me. I, right I still think Bigfoot's still an alien. <laughs> oh, we just got another thirty dollar donation from Eric Tyner. What's up, Eric? Woo -woo. Awesome. Uh, so has anyone here used a Tesla coil before? Yes. No. Uh desktop or a big honking standalone? Um it wasn't um I mean I I would say it probably Roughly two and a half, three foot tall. It wasn't okay, so mine. desktop version. Yeah. What do you think of that? Um, do you think it changes the complexion of the whole area? I honestly, uh, my opinion, based only on my experience, um, I really don't think that there's much of a correlation with EMF or using something like that and activity because you go to a lot of places that don't have power mm -hmm. and they're just active on top of that there's a major power source that everyone seems to overlook and that's the sun I mean, no. every, every place is bombarded with, with solar emf and, you know just all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. um i recommend people not using them because it could potentially burn a place down um i i I've watched the live video. This was years ago. I watched a live video of these people. They brought in one of those things, and they were using it inside of a, a museum. And I'm like, what? And you could see, like, sparks flying off of it, sparks popping off the floor. And I'm like, oh, my God. That's got to be a huge one, then. It was, it was pretty big. I, I couldn't tell you how big it was. But it mm -hmm. sounds bad. But anyways. Yeah, I wish. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> um yeah, I was like, dude, you guys are gonna burn that place down. Shut it off. Yeah. Um, they, they they said the only thing that really changed was uh, uh, there was a lot of static in the air. But yeah. I, um, with investigating it hails, you know, everybody says, oh, you know, large body of water moving, you know, this energy, which you know, spirits can create off and stuff. I'm like, 
I don't know about that. I've been to hell so many times. It's right on um, the Tennessee River. And 99%, well, 95% of the time, nothing. It's like nothing, nada. And it's also lime and limestone shell and some other things. So I like, I'm like, eh, I don't think this holds weight. That's yeah. just me. So, just see, me. I, I went to Melbourne Manor. And it, I don't know if you've been to Melbourne Manor. I, it is on my list. Okay. So there's this bathroom way down at the end of the hall. It's in uh, on Shadowman Hallway, way way down at the end. To, uh, if I'm looking straight down at the end, it's it's off to the left. So I decided to bring a desktop. Um, uh, sorry, bring a, a desktop uh, Tesla coil. And this thing is small, so it gives off small little sparks, but it doesn't shoot out. It's just like it makes a lot of noise, and you can see the. Like the lightning bolts come out, which is so cool. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, so so one of the the pe- persons that was with me sat in the tub, and you know tried to connect with the spirit and stuff. So he was sitting far back in the tub. As towards at the end of the session, we we're say about 20, 20, 25 minutes or so, he was almost face to face. And want to be so up close to that Tesla coil. It wasn't funny because it draw drew him into it, and it took him three months to even talk to me about it after the experiment was done. And the same thing happened for his his other co uh, other uh, Cynthia. Uh, she got in the tub. So hey, I'm gonna take over for you. You know, we'll we'll let's see how it goes. Same thing. It almost drew her closer to the Tesla coil. So, and she said it got really funky. So it upgraded some things in that room alone. And from there on, they won't use it for now until they understand it more. Yeah. Um, are EMF pumps safe? Not safe. Uh, EMF pumps, um, uh, first off, don't, don't waste your money on them because all it is is a little tiny motor with a freaking magnet on it that just spins the magnet. And you can literally just buy a bunch of magnets. Mm-hmm. Set them on a table or something, and that's your EMF pump. Because that's like literally all it really is. Yeah. So, like I said, I was talking about before, I, I use a, a plasma ball. I don't use the small plasma balls. I use the full, big size plasma balls. And even then, that drew a lot of, a lot of energy in the area. It changed, <laughs> changed the complexion of the room. And see, you know, if if uh if the spirit has never seen something like that in you know in life mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure that you're like what the hell is this and perhaps maybe what you guys you know were feeling in that room was i don't know spirit like well holy shit. <laughs> but again i'm not i'm not saying that it doesn't work or it's not true i'm just finding um that when i investigate certain locations such as hell's bar down Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to hold up that theory. I gotta interrupt. Eric Tyner just sent another twenty and ten dollar thing. He bought a raffle ticket for each tier. My guy, thank you Very so cool. much, Eric. Awesome. So yeah, that brings us to. Let's see. That brings us to twelve hundred dollars now. What's your goal? Awesome. Nice. Thirty-two hundred. Do you have a a link that people can go to? I don't, but all of my information is right there because I used uh, GoFundMe in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But what I had happen was I'd let people come for free because they'd be like, "We'll do a donation." It'd be like I'd be like ten, twenty bucks. You know what I'm talking about? Like just like small things, whatever you can afford, Mm -hmm. and then have people take it back. Well, what I'm saying is, okay, so you know I do my paranormal oh, question of the day three days a week. Ah. So I was wondering if you could send me a link, and I'll post it on my paranormal question of the day for you, and then just explain what it is, and so then that way people can send money to you. I'll send you the info. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll send you send some. Send it to me as well. Okay. Send it to me as well. You know what you I'll should do is say, here's your question of the day. How much are you donating this link? How much what? You're lagging out. You lagged out. How much are you donating? Oh, I was saying, 
when oh, uh, yeah, you're yeah. given the link, put it as your question of the week, going, how much are you donating to this cause? <laughs> uh, yeah. True. I mean, I, I've, I've done it for Daniel Class. Um, I've done it for that thing that uh, uh, Josh Hurd was doing for that lady that has cancer. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'm willing to do that to, for anybody that needs something to help out with the location. Yeah, I'll put it on my, my live feed. I usually go an hour every day or three times a week. So, you know, like, I, and I was talking about this in the beginning of the show. I really don't think people understand, like, running a location isn't, like, glamorous by any means. Well, it's Especially, hard work. I don't have anyone to help me. It's it's just me. Like Angela does the trips with me sometimes. And Michael like went and helped out that one. But like when it comes down to the nitty gritty of the actual building, mm -hmm. I my only option is to hire these contractors. Like the roof. Like I need money for these things. And like right. I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. I don't make yeah. shit. Like I have my own bills, my own things to pay Charger for. Charge your students. I took this off. I took this on. <laughs> I fucking wish. I took this on because took I didn't want to see this building. <laughs> you money. I'll put you We're down to give you your lunch money. All right, kids. We're going to go on a field trip, and this is what your parents have to pay. <laughs> field trip. I am pretty gangster. I could do that. Um, I, I did tell her to do extra credit. Make them go to the Broken Bow Asylum. Yeah, yeah. Just, you, know, you want A, you got to do this for me. If you don't do good school, this is where you go. <laughs> They're little bitty. They would not enjoy that. Like, the whole reason I took this on was because I didn't want to see the trigger objects. I didn't want to just see the building sit there. That's a little mean. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the kids in there and say, you're trigger object. Man, that's a little mean. <laughs> All kidding aside. <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't want to see the building sit there. And like, I took it on because it was offered to me. And I, I said yes without thinking. You know what I'm talking about? Like, if someone were to come up to you out of nowhere and be like, hey, I don't want this building anymore. Do you want it? I said yes. And not like thinking about the ramifications of it. It was affordable at the time, but it was like a one time payment. Now there's all this other shit that I have to get yeah. done and do. And like, get it done. Yeah. But it's it's been a while, and the fact that I have people who consistently take up booking dates, but then don't show up, don't pay. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I don't know that shit that happens. Know. So it's just and the fucking stealing. Everything that I do is impeded by people like stealing or destroying and wrecking, and it's like, you know, I take five steps ahead and then I take thirty steps back because everything just like mm -hmm. keeps getting taken. Or, I still or can't uh, someone stole your toilet. <laughs> that was that, the that's, that's ballsy. thing ever. That's ballsy. You guys see him walking out with that thing. That sucker's heavy. No, it no it's not. Bucket. It was just a bucket. Oh, they just. <laughs> they stole the, the poop. Bucket. Oh, well, that wasn't a bucket. It was like a chair. That one was fancier than the bucket. It was oh, like geez. a full. It was like a camping fold chair with like you. You put it. With, is it like got a hole in the flat, chair yeah. so I could just sit in a chair and then? Yeah. Oh, ha, Sean said it's a crappy thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it is a um, crappy thing to do. Very crappy. Isn't there? I mean, can can you maybe find like a couple people who would like volunteer whoa, whoa, to do whoa, whoa, security? Whoa. Hold up. Wait, sorry. Eric Tyner just donated a hundred dollars now. What are you doing? He said, what? "Win or lose, I will pledge more to help you out." Yeah. What are you doing? Oh my god! Thank you so much, Eric. Hey, do you, you have my dad. do you have Wi-Fi? Who me? Yeah, and the yeah. at the building. Oh no, but I do have a mobile hotspot thing. Okay, so. But I get perfect service in there, so. Okay, so here here's my my question for you. All right, so do you know where the main problem area is in the building where people do a lot of stuff to, or is it just oh, all over? So here's the thing: you're trying to talk about security cameras, motherfucker. They've stolen my security cameras. Shit, you not. Went up into the tree and took that shit out. Well, you got. I have a brand that you could probably hide pretty well. So have you met Southern cans? Crackheads? They are very, very driven. What you can do is blend it into the building, like, like cover up like the lens part, so you don't like you could spray paint it and blend it in. How uh, do you spray paint the lens and still be able to see through it? No, no, no. Cover up oh, the lens. Clear coating. 
yeah, clear coating, cover up the lens, spray paint it so it blends into the spot so they don't know it's even there. Mm -hmm. And get one of those little wise cams. They're only 25, 30 bucks. I'd rather people and you can see it through your phone shit. too. Yeah, but the problem is, is that by the time she, you know, like she can do something about it, they've already exactly. They've already well, yeah, but I mean, if, if on her phone she can press record on the spot for yeah, the night. Yeah, but my thing is they wear hunting masks and gear. Like these people, crackheads are not stupid. Mm -hmm. They know what they're fucking doing. I can't. So I've had my building stripped for their copper twice. I've had to redo the copper in my building twice now. Do you, you know how cheap. fucking expensive that yeah, shit is? I, I can, yeah, it's I can. not fucking cheap, dude. I've had, had it redone <laughs> twice. You need, you need, you need a. You need a couple of bodies out there. Yeah, security. Yeah. 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 I need to start training all those dogs that come, the all the yeah. strays, <laughs> and just, like, have my own little pack. Or make or it, like... Or that neighbor. Uh, yeah. Well, my neighbor does, like, he'll... But my neighbors all call the cops. Like, if they see someone fucking with it... But the, the bad thing about it is the alleyway. If you come in from the alleyway... There's no way they're going to see you sneaking in. It's hidden from the rest of the neighborhood. There's a huge tree line right behind us. And there's a huge, like, the field that belongs to me. And then the huge tree line by the water tower and the electric plant that's, like, right there. And then the front, but it's covered by the building. Mm. When they come through that alleyway, which they do all the time, they've broken down that back door more times than I can count. That's the one door I refuse to put a lock back on. Because it gets broken every single week. I it, Now it's just a bunch of like wood that's just like hammered in there crazy because they just take it out. So I just pull the wood back shut. Like I don't even like mm. bother hammering it anymore. Hmm. <laughs> Eric and I catch no crackhead. For real. They, there's, it's crazy because if they put all of that energy into doing something like okay. productive with their shit, bro. And like I don't care if you... Do you need money? Come in and clean some shit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're in that position where well, you yeah. need money, don't steal from me. Come ask if there's something you can do, and I'll pay you to fucking clean up or do the yard. Things like that. You know what I'm talking about? But don't stop stealing my shit, dude. Right. Right. There, I'll put up a barbed wire around the place in your... That's illegal, because I, I actually asked about it. Oh, really? It is? Uh, wow. That's a first time. Yeah. Well, that's illegal. I mean... Because I wanted or, to, or, I wanted to put it all in the attic space. Because I don't go up there anymore, so I wanted to layer the attic space with it. Because that's how they get in. They come in through the roof, and they get down into the attic space, and then go. So like the south wing is pretty secure, but through the attic space, you can go straight through to the main and south wing, and then they just drop down into the maintenance room, which is in the south wing, and open it up and get in there. So, here's the last idea. And this is what happens in Sheboygan. No, no, no serious. He's got I know, a, but it's the way no, you say it. It's fucking hilarious. Sheboygan is a funny one. They <laughs> have a wing. Wing. He has a wing that is dedicated to break-ins. So if they go into a room, it automatically shuts behind him and locks him in until the police comes. Bro, I'm so trying to go to the bathroom. You. you think that I have money to be making some automatic doors and shit? No, no, no. no. But that that's they, you probably could get done cheaply to do that though. But that's an alternative to, to lock somebody in and have it, like be a trip for the police to come. It might stop. Or I could just sit in there with a shotgun one night. That's that's perfect. I love that idea. That I'd be scared shitless. And you can just <laughs> add to the collection of ghosts. It would be easier if Ask you were in Texas, because in Texas, you can shoot to kill on your own property. Yep. Yeah, if somebody yeah. steps foot on your property, you shoot them, you'd be like, oh, well, they was on my shit. But Oklahoma's a little bit different. But I also believe that they would not give two shits. Like, I feel like they think I'd be helping out uh, or something. I, I, I'm just thinking Community ideas service. to just try to help or something. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Because it's the same. It's the same five fucking people. Because we've caught them. Like, they've caught them, like, trying to haul down the street with my shit. And, like, or, like, well, where's this? I'm like, well, I sold it already. Like, i beat your fucking ass. Fucking serious. <laughs> there was one time they caught one dude, and I was like, he just came out, but he didn't look like he had anything on him, but he had a backpack. And I don't really see anything missing except for a few things in the back room, like books and stuff like that. He stole a tarot card flat, like a, 
not a tarot card, a, a Ouija board flag. He sold that in like two books. And it was Jeez. like, what were you going to? And a lamp. That was it. And a lamp. He had a lamp. Yeah, with no fucking gold. Is Ouija meth board that flag, easy? Knock yourself out. <laughs> yeah, is meth was... that easy to get down there? I don't. Yeah, apparently it is. From what I've heard from the cops, it it truly is. This sounds like a bad part of town. Yeah, yeah it is. It it's really funny though because aside from like the break in part, like they're not violent. They're not. You know what I'm saying? They're just like it's just sketchy. But I feel like anywhere has that though because. Yeah. We, we live right down the street from a place that's just like that. We pay like a ridiculous amount to live. We don't live like in the ghetto anymore, but we still like deal with the ghetto tendencies. Like it's fucking mm-hmm. nuts. Shit's just nice. it's, it's just like a bad time everywhere. You know what I'm talking about? Like ever since COVID, yeah. mm-hmm. it's just like people have really shown themselves. Well, not just that. Like a lot of people lost hope. You mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about? Like a lot of people lost their jobs, turned to drugs. Like it just it became a thing. There yeah. was no hope left anymore. So fuck it. My, why not become an addict, you know? I mean, yeah. really, it's going to take bodies being there to watch over. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, because they've stolen the cameras. Like, I've literally tried everything else short from murdering someone, which I can't Although, do. Although, Edie's offering you a Rottweiler, a German Shepherd, and a Doberman. No, she said, I need a Rottweiler. Oh, She's not I she was them. offering them. I wish. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do the drawing for the first tier prize. The first tier prize is this right here. Give me one second, gents. So the first tier prize is... Hold on. I'll get it there. Get myself back in the picture. It's the one free night at Melbourne Manor. Sign free photo from Nick Groff. A one free year subscription to Haunted Magazine. Four free nights from the Broken Boat at the Broken Boat Asylum. And a personalized charm by Tina Frick. It's super witchy and amazing. We're going to go ahead and start spinning. So you get one free night at Malvern Manor. You get a free autograph photo of Nick Groff. You get a free one year subscription to Haunted Magazine. And y'all don't understand, these magazines are not cheap. These motherfuckers are expensive and they have really great content. They're huge and they're really well printed, but they cost a lot. (laughs) I haven't gotten one yet. So a full year subscription, that's pretty pretty. Four free days at the asylum, my beautiful boo. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, look at you, so pretty. <laughs> and then <laughs> you get the personalized charm by Tina Frick. So you actually get this charm that's right here. You get that, and she puts a spell on it, especially for you. So I'm going to go ahead and do the drawing. Do, do, do. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap spin. It was only like six people who donated, but they donated a lot. Do we get I, it's it's just a all white to me. I can't yeah, see the no. finale. Oh, there it is. I see it now. Oh, I see okay. it. The finales. Ooh, wait, can you see it? No. When you when you turn I can side, barely you see it. You got to turn turn to the side. Yeah, and then yeah you can turn see it. it. Just can other way. No, not, not other way. way. Like 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 this way. Like, just uh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. There you, yeah. Now we see the wheel. Okay. Well, it's the Fennels. They win. Rich and Edie, you lucky motherfuckers. <laughs> Not just lucky. You're lucky, you're motherfuckers. Lucky motherfuckers. Oh, this is so And awesome. you get the accent, too. Yeah, no, we, we get that ghetto. <laughs> ghetto? I was going mobster. <laughs> ghetto gangster. You motherfuckers. motherfuckers. So now... You motherfuckers. <laughs> so, do the elbow one. Come on, do the elbow. You motherfuckers. <laughs> okay. Oh, now, yeah. now we're going to go ahead and do the Let's second tier. <laughs> Will Bird. I can't fucking do Big Bird. He's a bitch. Anyway. Um. <laughs> He really is. He's a whiny little bitch. He needs to take <laughs> the migraine off of Sesame Street. I'm done. Um, uh, here's this kid's big bird. He's a whiny little bitch. I mean, you know, if the yellow bitch shoe fit, wear it. Um, so we're going to do the second tier drawing. I'm a little scared to say do Bert. <laughs> we'll uh, 
Key. Ernie? No, Keybert. Uh, it feels kind of floppy like a hose. And uh, this feels kind of <laughs> kind of squishy like a sponge. And uh, oh, Bert, I think I got it. It's you, Bert. It's you, isn't it? See? Whoa. This is when they're using the tech. I watch too much Sesame Street with my son. That's an actual. What's, what's part of Bert, though? Um, I like how Bert was saying, hey, Bert. <laughs> well, go to sleep, Ernie. Go to sleep. Do you not think before you go out and start playing your drums? God. That's you must hard. get really dizzy if you do that voice a lot. No. I get dizzy. I'll just listen to it sometimes. <laughs> I was just watching her. I'm like, I'm starting to feel a room spin. Oh, man. I can't do that with the head. No way. <laughs> Okay, so this is for tier two. Can't really see it. Burp, 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 burp. There right. it is. Nope. Kind of. It's oh, right no, it went away. Fuck it. <laughs> spinny, spinny, spin, spin, spin. So how spinny many names do up. we have on this one? Spinny spins. Peggy fucking Goodell. Peg <laughs> The pegs. I fucking love Peggy. I love the vanilles. I love these motherfuckers. It's crazy. Like only six people donated, but like four of them are the people. I don't see no frontal visor on this thing. That are there for like everything. I, I know. know. I'm just thinking if I was to put this on my channel, I gotta say uh, age restriction. Everyone knows that if it's my show, you don't show it to the public. Like it's not safe for work. It's not safe for the general public consumption like this is not a show where we go to say good words i'm like i hope i don't swear a lot never mind <laughs> that's what when i was on um i was on the pot of for pooches thing i was on that stream oh when they were oh doing that god. live fundraiser f bomb and oh my god so i apparently ended up making it a trend for the rest of the night they had like eight, nine guests on before I came on, and no one had like cursed, I guess. And then and I only had 10 minutes, like everyone had 10 minutes. Within 10 minutes, I dropped the F bomb like nine times. <laughs> I didn't mean to. The first like five of them were like, you know, and that's just how I, can't, I, am. I can't fucking, and I mean, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I just fucking did that. I mean, oh my God, I can't like. And then it became a thing. So the next person who came on after me was like, fucking good to be here. And so everyone just started it off like that. And then the rest of the thing became a fuck fest, basically. Like every oh, single That did come out very good. It became a thing to try and break my record. By the end of the night, they were like, oh, so-and-so broke Ashley's record finally because you had to squeeze so many fucks within a 10-minute thing. Good thing they weren't showcasing any chickies on there. <laughs> Are you fucking swearing this right now? <laughs> Quickies and ho-hos. You know what would be funny to do is to track their sales to see if they went up after. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, right. Be like, oh, we apparently need Cussy because the donations came in a lot more. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so I I showed – I can't remember who it was. It was someone uh, – Tyler Paracon. I was like, I'm around a group weird – like group – of just weird ass people, right? If I show them this, they won't judge me. <laughs> they haven't talked to me since then, so I'm pretty sure they judged me. You are shunned. But um, <laughs> that thing we did when Shay asked me to do the Fifty Shades of Grey and Sesame Street voices, <laughs> <laughs> I said I showed them the clip that Matt sent me because he just had it like clipped out from the show. <laughs> and after I finished playing it, one of the girls goes why and i was like because they asked me to like wait what I was, do you not find this funny is this weird to you like did i do something wrong like oh my god uh, it was like Sesame the first time in my life with I 50 didn't shades of gray like, and you're wondering what's wrong with this yeah i thought it was hilarious <laughs> she, she, seemed like, <laughs> she seemed highly offended by it and i was like it was just a joke like oh oh like, you guys should see how she is on, on our shows on every uh third monday of the month probably too close <laughs> to real for him <laughs> it gets wild what you see is what you get my guy like there is no like it, it just is it is what it is sorry guys <laughs> sorry but not sorry <laughs> yeah. oh, 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the third tier real quick. Lord Let me. Us. I need to add Eric to this one real quick. I forgot to add him to the last tier. Oops. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> no, he was on the last one that I drew. I mean, like the last, like the third tier. I added him to the first and second, but not the third one. Okay. So we're going. Do -do -do. Drum roll, push please. <laughs> push the button. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, my God, stop one. already. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Tyner, you won. Wow, she didn't drop the F-bomb on that what one. What is that? I know. He doesn't get a nickname. <laughs> I, I'm, just, like, I'm just so I'm happy for him because I felt bad that he donated so much and only got the last. Well, like, I'm just genuinely happy, right? I'm like, fuck her. I'm excited. I'm like, oh. There yeah, it is. No, there you go. Oh. Yay. He did it. Woo. Valley Simos. He did it. That's Dora for y'all who don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> I can also do back, 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 back. No, I'm just kidding. I can do click the camera. It's like click the camera. I can take a peek. And she's like, that's a skull in my car. Oh, man. Tears. I tell you, I got tears. Okay, guys. Yeah. So all of the winners, go ahead and contact me so I can get you guys the contact information for these shirts, the um, charm, all these other things. The uh, Malvern Manor thing, you guys can hit up Josh Hart or you can do it for me and I'll we'll give him your contact info. Um, you will get the signed autograph from Nick Graf. Graf. <laughs> Nick autograph. Oh. Um, that Nick. From me. That so Nick I just need your address so I can send it out. Other than that, Thank you guys so much for donating. Keep donating. Like, even though this is over, just keep donating. Even you guys had a chance to win stuff. I put it out there. You know, I gave everyone a chance to win, but now you can just donate it out of the kindness of your hearts if you would so like to. Um, Channing Pratt, if you're still watching, you were one of the only other people who donated and participated in this raffle. So I'm going She's to go cool. ahead I'll and send a big thing. give you... <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to get funny, Joe. Your husband's in the military. He's going to have you arrested for weird. <laughs> oh, my God. There's going to be I'll a hazing him, going on. I'll send them both one, okay? Jeez. Fuck yeah. Equality. That's what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> fuck yeah. Um, so, but like, still, just keep donating. Keep booking. I only have four spots left for the rest of this year. Two of them in October. Um, the other ones are like November and December, I think. That's oh, towards the end of the year. I already have people booking out for 2023. Um, if you go onto the asylum page, all of the different packages are there. We have filming packages, event packages, um, daytime, nighttime packages, just all different types of tiers of things. Thank you so much, Eric. I just I really appreciate you. And I will keep you updated, guys. Um I need to get better about that, but it's also because I'm so dirty and gross by the time I'm done cleaning. The last thing I feel like doing is touching my phone and like taking, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you're just like, I don't want to, you don't understand. By the time I leave there after cleaning, it's like, I look like a swamp person. Like, why do we clarify like a swamp that? Monster. Um, hi, Tina. Thank you for your donation, my guy. Um, I'm also really bad about just documenting things, apparently. Like, whenever we go to conferences or um, events and things like that, everyone else, like, has a billion pictures. And I'm like, oh, I forgot. To, I just, I'm a very in-the-moment type of person, you know? No, it's not a bad thing. And, you need a historian. Yeah. That's okay. I go to all these events and do all kinds of stuff. And people are like, well, you have these pictures. Were you actually there? Or are you just, like, taking yeah. other people's pictures? And it's like, no, I was there. Yeah, I promise. Yeah. Joe's the, the creepy guy away. in the corner taking photos yeah. of everyone. <laughs> just, don't, just don't bend over. Joe's the first thing that whenever they're like, can you take a picture of us? They're, he's like, sure. And he comes up and he does this, but then he hits the selfie button, the selfie mode. I have done that. I have done that. I know. I, I, can, I, just, I know you like that. I love how, Michael, we've met, but we haven't met, but I 
I know you motherfuckers. I know you can't see because you legally blind. And I know you do weird right. shit like that. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you are and it's weird i don't know how you drive that one time you videoed from the car i was incredibly nervous i was like they let this motherfucker drive like he just told me he was legally blind <laughs> and behind a wheel what? i remember that <laughs> it was we were chatting before a show one day because like somebody was going to be late you were like in your car coming oh, yeah, yeah. Or something, and i was like I, I didn't want to be rude, <laughs> but the whole time I was like, is somebody else going to come hop up in this bitch and take him home? Like, what is he? He he can't read the comments. <laughs> when we're doing our show, when we're doing our show, it's so funny. I got a phone. I can blow it up. All you guys see when we're doing our phone, because it's just an audio show, all you see is this. <laughs> You just see the top of Derek. You just see a big shiny spot because he's like leaned in, trying to hey, read everything. I I just got a new car not too long ago. I got I got rid of my truck. Now I got a Jeep. Man, that fucker flies. He, he tells us he, he's got a Jeep, but it's really a minivan. You can't see the bitch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it doesn't yeah. actually go anywhere. It's got a projector on the windshield that makes it look like it's in motion. <laughs> hey, I'll take y'all for a ride one day. I can I can't say you'll be happy, but I can. First of all, you done told me like three different stories tonight about how you almost like made someone puke while you was driving, and then all the other blind stories that I done heard from you like. <laughs> Fuck, I look like getting in. I love you. I love you. You know you're my fucking family. But what I'm not finna do is ride with your ass. Aww. I love you. Take but a no. chance. Yeah. It's because she loves you so much that she's gonna say no. Oh, yeah, how exactly. about how, how about somebody donate to the to the asylum to watch her scream and yell and puke? <laughs> what? What? I'm gonna bargain my life for some donation money. <laughs> Oh, I thought he was talking about drinks. So I was like, "No, oh, he's I, driving." I, I have driven half drunk before, allegedly. No, allegedly. you can't even fucking see the fucking. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're almost legally blind, and you're half drunk, and you decide, "Let's go for it." Yeah, I was in my twenties. I'm half okay. No, I'm in my mid twenties now. Then? Huh? Could you see better back then? Hell no. Oh. Well, that doesn't make it any better. Right? Why? He's like, that is the justice. I live on the well, I live That's on why I'm half blind now. <laughs> that's why I say, maybe I should smoke the bowl before I come on. Maybe my, my right eye will work again. <laughs> maybe we'll finally see your face when we do the when we do the show. That would be amazing. But I'm telling you guys, the whole fucking hour we're sitting there, we'd never see his face. Never see his face. All you see is just dome. Well, it, it, they, they put us in those small ass windows to begin with. It does. It's Skype is real weird about stupid. that. Stupid. I'm like, I can't. Half time, I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. That's why I use my phone to look at the uh, the chat while we're on Spreaker. Oh, I yeah. don't use the computer. Yeah, I just use my phone. Yep, I'm on my phone for that too. Actually, you know, it'd be really fun to watch. Him driving a golf cart with you hanging on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> well, how far is that? It goes at slow speeds. Golf carts, they can go up to 30, Not 35, the sound, 40 we miles. Some real oh, yeah. Yeah. Hit the, nope. the sand pit and go. <laughs> <laughs> Our golf carts can go, man. Oh, yeah, golf carts. I mean, they're tiny when you were in this tiny little golf cart. I mean, it seems so much faster. It's, it's weird. <laughs> I have never oh, ridden a golf cart before. I'm just picturing poor Ashley hanging on to the two bars with half her body hanging out the side going, are we done yet? <laughs> First of all, I would let go. I know, tuck, I know how to tuck and roll. I grew up in the South, but I've been thrown off four-wheelers. I've been dragged underneath four-wheelers and trains and shit like, yup. Did you just say you were dragged under trains? It was like so it's just like kitty party trains that the, <laughs> that the... <laughs> Okay, because uh... I'm sitting here thinking some of these oh, trains, man. if you're dragged under, you ain't waking up. <laughs> so they're like these I don't know how to say, they're these huge fucking barrels, like those big industrial barrels. 
that they hollow out and make like little trains and like put wheels on them and hook them up together and then like someone tows it with like a four wheeler or something and it's like a mini train they would use at like birthday parties and one of the kids in the back was standing up so I went to go like put him down and buckle him up because I was about nine or ten at the time I was like one of the oldest ones we were just helping with my friend's birthday party and I got up and my friend thought it would be funny to take off on the four wheeler while I was standing up thinking it would just scare me well it threw my ass the fuck out of it and i got stuck in between two of the trains and like my knee has a scar that's like about that long because i just got dragged because everyone was screaming at him but they just he thought that they were like laughing and when he finally looked back he realized that he was dragging me. missing someone yeah i have like, a good chunk of my knee like the muscles and everything right they were like uh. missing from it all because I was trying to buckle a motherfucker up. Mm -hmm. Safety first, then teamwork, y'all. That's what when the safety, storm came. Safety goes out the window. Yeah, we know, Mister. I'm gonna drive blind and drunk. <laughs> what? <laughs> Give me that. Half drunk. Let's be PC about it. Allegedly. 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 Yes. You're putting no, words in my mouth. Adding the allegedly for you. You're the one who came out and just snitched. You dry snitched on your fucking self, bro. He said, I did that. I committed a crime. Oh, like, yes, I did. I, I paid for one of them. I did. My front it's end got allegedly. taken off by a boat trailer. <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't because you're half blind, bro? <laughs> well, see, I didn't, I didn't see the the four by four go through the intersection. It was dark, but then my lights caught the the boat trailer. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go. Oh shit! I guess that's not gonna work out so well. <laughs> but it turns out, it turns out the guy was drunk as it was, and you know, I was shit faced and dumbass me. Me and him actually went to another bar afterwards. <laughs> 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 the first thing that guy said when he got out of here was like, you're blind, bro? I'll see you, I'm going to smack you. And, and, and the thing is, then he tried to bum rush me in the bar after we were like, oh, now nah, you're going to pay for this, you're going to pay for that. Like, the fuck I am? You ran a stop sign, not me. I just hit your boat trailer. <laughs> 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 You're the one who ran the stop sign. And being like, "Sir, I'm sorry. I'm I'm legally blind. I can't." I can't That's really right. That's that what I said. Level. You got nothing on me. <laughs> all match, guys. All match. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. We're almost actually at ten o'clock. I plan to stop at nine. Um, I gotta go get Ollie to bed. Yep. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Sitting around and chatting. We're going to have to do this again. It's just like a round table for yeah. a show. Um, uh, we absolutely. have so much time to kill. Um, uh, remember maybe... to send us the link so we can put this on our streams when we go live. I totally will. Um, and then, uh, I, I, in fact, if you plan on going live on a stream through the Broken Bowl one night, if you want to do it that way, say, hey, we're going to go live if you want to donate to this as we go live. I will, maybe, depending. That's okay. Yeah. I like it. I, I will message you, not tonight, though, because you got to get the, your little one to bed. So, yep. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk. You got it, bud. I cannot wait. A lot of wait. fun. A lot of fun. We still, you still hold the record, by the way. None. Of, I've never had a show as long as the one that I've had with you. We've had it close. We cut it for three hours with Kimmel. But you and I, I think, with the longest, like five hours. <laughs> wow. Joe wow. was my guest one night and it was like one of the first shows I had ever done. And um we looked down and I'm like, holy fuck, it's like almost midnight. Did you we, we gotta we, we gotta go. Like this is this is <laughs> this has gone on for about five hours. Well, we realized at the four hour mark we've been on for four hours, like, okay, we're gonna wrap it up. And then like another hour afterwards, we're like, okay, we're really going now. I promise. <laughs> and my longest is six and it was and a half hours. You got lucky though, because I'm normally very quiet. Like anybody who like talks to me on the phone, they're like, "You, you there? Like, <laughs> yeah. you you? I love it. And I feel He's so joined blessed. the spirit world. He'll be back. <laughs> I'm so very blessed to know all of you guys. Thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate it, gentlemen. Thanks for letting me come on. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. Always, anytime. Thank you for everyone who donated, uh, took the time to share. Even if you couldn't donate, a lot of you guys shared. I understand Like when you can't donate, it, it doesn't really make a difference. The sharing is what helps, just getting it out there. Um, because we do want it to be open for longer. We want it to 
make we want to make it a safer, more comfortable place for everyone to come and to continue enjoying this centuries down the road still, I hope. You know, in another 70 years, I hope this building's still there and somebody else is taking care of it the way I am. Yeah. You know, Even so those that are Absolutely. legally blind. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe not him. He obviously doesn't make good choices. <laughs> Allegedly. And this although, Allegedly. He fucking did it, yo. Although, and, if and this is why my wife drives at night. Building in the way that you're trying to open up, he'll probably happily drive through the wing for you. <laughs> <laughs> Go I, through I some imagine. walls and be like, "Here, I made it easier for you." <laughs> I can't even watch y'all. You guys have a great night. Remember, if you want to discover the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And everyone have a fucking fantastic weekend. Good night, all. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Bye.